I'm sitting closer. Good morning. During the declared emergency, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means using WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. This will be a limited, this will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We also ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wishes to receive a copy of the decision of the Committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab in the event of an appeal will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, T-Lab, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. We'll call each item in the order listed in the agenda. And where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. Where the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to, to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you're reaching the five minute mark. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and make a presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the applicant application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentation. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the speakers. That will mark the end of the discussion on the matter. The applicant will then be taken into the committee for a decision. Uh, Mr. Secretary Treasurer, we have the minutes of the last meeting to confirm. Unfortunately, no, Mr. Chair. Um, oh, right, the minutes not, aren't ready. Not ready yet. We only had the meeting was last Thursday. So, okay. Are there any declaration of interest of panel or staff on the uh, items in the morning time slot? None to declare. Thank you. And in terms of deferrals, we'll just go through. I don't believe there are any deferral requests, but we'll go through the uh, the agenda and okay. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Lastly, I just uh, let you know, uh, I will not be, there's some malfunctioning with the technology, so I will not be on uh, camera today, so I, I'm wearing a t-shirt. And uh, the members with us, my name is Michael Clark, I'm the chair today, um, the panel chair, and uh, with us is uh, members Danny Bellissimo, Donald Taylor, Laura Alderson, and Sophia Ruddick. Okay, so we can start with the first application. 2834 to 2836 Lakeshore Boulevard West. 
It's an application to, for a third story addition above the existing mixed use building and to create four additional residential units. The building will contain a total of 12 residential units and two commercial units. And there are uh, six variances. And on this application, we have uh, emails, uh, planning, uh, transportation, and we have opposition. And uh, registered to speak on this application is only the uh, agent, Jason Fung. Hello. Hello. Uh, good, good morning. Um, I, I suppose uh, you'd want a presentation? Uh, well, let's see, committee members, would you like a presentation on this? And um, well, I guess you, you're, you've seen that community planning is requesting that uh, uh, in their memo, April 6th, before the last, this, all the matters today, by the way, for everyone listening, or this matters were supposed to be heard April the 13th, but the meeting had to be canceled uh, due to notification issues. So we're redoing this, that hearing today. So we do have the planning email. Um, We have two other emails from planning, and they don't seem to, unless someone saw that, um, Mr. Fung, that uh, they're retracting their uh, initial opinion rendered on April the 6th in their uh, planning report, that the variance number two for the east side yard setback of 1.25 meters from the main wall with windows be refused. So, Mr. Right, Fung, right. you're aware of that? I guess you do you want to you accept that? Have you uh, or do you want to? Uh, yeah, yeah. So on that on that east side, I can speak towards that. I mean, on the east side, we created balconies. Uh, if if we look at sheet A three hundred three, we we put in balconies uh, at one point two five meters so that the windows would be set back on that east side. So um, that's how we addressed that issue. Okay. Uh, but I can give a presentation. Uh, I, yeah, and that's, I, uh, the other uh, thing is, yeah, and I guess you have the transportation uh, memo as well. That's correct. You're yeah. Okay with that. Okay, and then there is a letter of opposition. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So should I just uh, dive in? Sure. Why don't you go and uh, just give us yeah. a, just address those issues that were. Um... Sure. Uh, so my name is Jason Fung. Uh, I'm located at 675 King Street West in Toronto. I am the architect on the project and representing the owners at 2836 Lakeshore Boulevard West. Uh, if we look at sheet A303, uh, the proposed new floor addition, new third floor addition, um, we're, we're proposing four new rental suites. Uh, the original application was five suites. Uh, there was one more in the rear where you can see it's bubble. Uh, but working with the city planners uh, and to abide with the city plan, we removed that one unit on the north side that's at the rear. Um, so we are now at FSI 3.0, which is what is allowed. Um, if we look at sheet A102, um, the existing building as it currently stands is, is basically lot line to lot line. So in terms of parking on the property, it's it's just not an option as it currently stands. So, but there, I mean, there is street parking. So as you can see, there's seven um, paid parking spaces on the street on 4th Street and four on the opposite side of the street. Um, on Lakeshore Boulevard, there's one street parking directly in front of the building. And uh, there's a TTC bus stop on 3rd Street, which is about a one minute walk eastward on Lakeshore Boulevard. Um, but I mean, the fact of the matter is we, we just can't fit parking on the space uh, on the property because the existing building is lot line to lot line. Um, the other okay. variance is about uh, yeah, Mr. Fung, Mr. Item. Fung, Mr. Fung. The planning report yes. yeah. uh, is, doesn't deal with parking; it deals with the balcony proposed on the third floor, I guess. And uh, have you read the planning yeah, report? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So we can go back to the third floor, A three o three. You can see the two balconies on that sheet um, right there. Yeah. So it's bubbled there. Uh, we did. We set it back one point two five meters from the uh, lot line on balcony uh, 304A and 303A, uh, just so that we can get windows into that uh, into those two suites. Um, that's how we dealt with that matter. Uh, I understand planning had a comment about if the neighbor's building had a, a major development, I think that is in the works. It makes, it, it makes those balconies a little awkward, but we would rather have balconies, we'd rather have some outdoor space for these, for these suites than, um, and try to fully redesign the corridor condition and flipping the balconies on 
the other side. Um, yeah, so uh, that's, I mean, uh, we are still matching the side main wall on the east side as well. So, I mean, uh, we're not changing anything fundamentally to the um, existing condition of the building. Um, and we also tapered the third floor inwards to create this kind of mansard roof condition, which kind of rectifies the whole building. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, uh, uh, there was a letter of objection and it was about the displacement of current yeah. tenants. Yeah. Uh, in working with housing, uh, the housing policy planner at the city, uh, we assure that, well, myself and the owners have assured that the displaced tenants would be allowed to return to their suites after construction. Uh, and we expect two tenants will be temporarily displaced for the new stairs that go up to this third floor. Okay. Um, yeah, from our viewpoint, I mean, the variances are minor in nature. Uh, we're complying with height and FSI um, and providing, you know, additional rental stock to the city. So, you know, we hope respectfully that uh, the committee agrees with the proposal and um, thank you for your time. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions about the uh, design. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fung. Uh, committee members, did anyone have any questions for the applicant in particular with respect to the balcony proposed on uh, design which requires variance two for the proposed east side setback um or any other I have a, I have, laura alderson i have a question yes i'm just wondering mr fung whether you've had any conversation with the bia at all because i believe this building falls within the lakeshore village bia oh uh that i mean i i haven't personally had a discussion with the bia but i think the owners are quite um uh, intertwined with the BIA, yeah, quite active in the BIA, yes. Mm -hmm. No, I assume that the density isn't the issue, it's the parking that would might be the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was there ever any consideration um, to do a green roof on top of the building? I'm just curious. Oh, um, not at the moment, but I mean, that's certainly something that we can do. I mean, uh, the, the owners are actually very much into green technologies, mm. so we're not against a green roof at all. Okay. Well, something like that would be great. I think it would be a great addition to the community. Mm, wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Anyone have any questions for uh, Mr. Fung, or is someone ready to uh, make a motion? Danny Bellissimo would like to make a motion. Um, I just want to clarify first. Planning is okay with this now. Is that that's what what I'm hearing from? Uh, I had a bit of difficulties hearing no I don't believe so they sent the memo dated April the 6th before the April 13th hearing and I don't believe they've retracted that memo oh I see so they're still concerned yeah. about that uh, okay yeah that's what I can't Thank you. That, Mr. Fung in his presentation that he should address that because yeah I, yeah, I wasn't it's... clear yeah, we, I mean, we rectified everything except for the balcony situation. They, they had asked for the balconies to be placed on the west side. Yeah, um, Mr. Fung, work with the yeah. corridors, so. we're, we're, in, uh, we're in questioning now, so unless you're asked a direct question, please. Uh... Oh, okay. Yes, uh, Mr. S uh, Carvalino is, is confirming. My understanding is correct. Community planning is still looking for a refusal of variance number two, the proposed east side yard setback. So just to clarify, just to clarify, that would mean no balconies. They want them to move them to the other side. So I mean, uh, would it be possible to look at sheet A three yeah, Mr. Mr. Fung, you finished your presentation. So unless you're asked a question, we are in committee now for the committee members to make a motion. And they're just trying to clarify, so I'm just clarifying. Staff has confirmed that community planning's memo of April the 6th remains in effect. Uh, Danny Bellissimo now has a question for staff. Um, a bit confused if if the uh, request is to flip the floor plan, I'm not sure if the floor plan works anymore or whether we need uh, new drawings. Can you comment on that, Philip? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the variance that's being requested would create a condition where it would uh, be 
Windows and the- Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Sorry, it's not coming through. Sorry, can you hear me now? No, no. So, a little bit better, but not enough. I don't know if the other members can hear you. If the other members can hear you, I'm fine. With, no, they're saying no. Okay, can you unmute me um, on the WebEx, please? Sorry, you're not coming through. Yeah, uh, no. I guess what Mr. Carvalino is saying, you know, first of all, it's a mem It's to refuse. They're not suggesting. Uh, it's either to accept the variance and the application, or not accept it. Um, I don't know if they talk about what they could do, or if you can ask. We want to direct the question to Mr. Fung as to what he could do if this variance is refused. Would he have no balcony, or could he flip it to the other side without triggering more variances? You can perhaps ask him that question. Can I uh, use your microphone? Yes, and Mr. Carvalino. Is coming to use my microphone. Sorry, Mr. Bellissimo. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're you're, you're good now. Sorry. the the uh, The idea is to create um, a better relationship between buildings. Once you do that that Main Street condition, where you have a party wall condition, so if the property to the east is developed, and the side yards in in a Main Street condition, you have a party wall condition. Um, the idea is to provide a minimum of five and a half meter separation between windows or, um, or accessible doors between the two buildings so that then that would create an 11 meter separation. Um, they're not providing that. So if the property next door develops and it goes to zero lot line for a party wall condition, then that balcony would be 1.25 meters from that party wall condition creating a, a light well condition. So that's why planning is asking for that. The opposite side on the west side uh, is uh, abutting a public right of way so that that condition won't exist on that side. So planning is just asking for that uh, condition to be refused so that the orderly development of Lakeshore can occur. Can, that's I, very, can I clarify that's where the can I clarify something? Where the balconies currently are situated is overlooking a parking lot which could be developed. Is that yes. is that correct? Yes, that's for sure. Yes. It's interesting that the neighbor hasn't weighed in, but it may perhaps they're relying on the planning memo, so they figured they didn't have to. Because you think that that next door neighbor, and I think we heard somewhere that it is uh, in the process of being redeveloped. I think Mr. Fung said that, or maybe Mrs. Ms. Alderson. So I'm um, surprised they're not here to uh, echo their concern, but planning has echoed that concern. And um, we have a decision to make specifically on that one variance. Uh, that's my difficulty because if there are no balconies then something has to happen to that space and it can't be uh, the increase of the floor area. So there'll have to be a roof sloping there somewhere which will create the same problem in the future anyhow if there's a party wall there, because if there's a cavity in that building at that on that side. So yeah. having a very a hard time understanding how to deal with this. Um, it's yeah. almost at, at the point where I think the applicant should really go back uh, to planning and see if he can flip things around, like Mr. Carvalino said, um, and uh, see if that works in his floor plan. Well, you know what? He had until since April 6th to do that, and he's chosen to come here. And we have a decision to make, and we have over 40 applications here today. So uh, not to ask you to sort of, uh, we got to sort of move on in this application. We can't think about well, what if the future. If he, has, I, uh, if he has to come back because of this, then he'll have to come back with a fresh application. He's had since April 6th well, to deal with this. I'll let someone else then comment then. Yeah, so perhaps, uh, you know, if you committee members have to feel whether that planning comment is valid, and if it is, to refuse the variance. We can't worry about what the applicant can or can't do. We have an application before us and we have a recommendation from planning. So <laughs> we've got to move on. Mr. Mr. Chair, it's uh, Donald Taylor. Um, th this, this isn't an ideal situation, but it, it, it already exists in the south part of the, almost half of this building, which is built right on the lot line. Um, so I see these balconies as a straight line extension of what already exists in the south half of the building. And I don't really think we're exacerbating um, a problem with the development of the property to the east. So um, 
I'm going to move uh, approval unconditionally. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. We have a second for Mr. Taylor's motion. Danny Bellissimo will second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Okay, the uh, application uh, passes is approved unanimously. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thank Fung. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Next application is item number 2, 159 Brentwood Road North. It's an application for a two-story rear addition, a second story above the existing attached garage, and a new front bay window and a new rear deck. And there are six variances. We have Councillor Grimes um, supports the planning condition. The planning condition is that it be constructed as illustrated on the architectural plans dated March 6th, March 11th, as it relates to lot coverage. And we have nothing else uh, on this application. Uh, we have registered to speak on this application. Hold on. Sorry. My computer flipped forward to item number six. Right. And so we have the planning condition and the counselor's letter. And uh, registered to speak as uh, Yama Asad, the agent, as well as the neighbors at 159, 157 Brentwood, 56 Princeton, and 506 Martin Grove. So let's first hear from the agent. So Mr. Chairman, just a just, uh, point of clarification, the neighbor at 506 Martin Grove Road will not be uh, joining us. Okay. Um, and the agent is actually Jim Sod. It is a different person. Uh, so I will be unmuting Jim Sod right now. Okay. And we do have uh, no um, no communication, but we do have two people. So we haven't gotten any letters of concern or opposition, but we'll hear from those people after we hear from Mr. Saad. Yes, uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, my name is Jim Saad. I'm the principal at uh, Paradigm Architecture and Design, and I'm acting as agent on behalf of the owner at 159 Brentwood Road North. Uh, so would you like to make a brief presentation to committee or perhaps uh, wait to see what the concerns are uh, of the neighbors? Uh, Unless you uh, know I'll it. make a few points if you wouldn't yep. mind, Go Mr. Ahead. Chair. Okay. Yep. Uh, so in this case, the owner is looking to maximize the usage of the property by enlarging his existing dwelling unit. Uh, the majority of the variances requested are a result of trying to match the existing height and breadth of the roof lines that are uh, part of the main house that's on site now. Mm -hmm and uh, also to build out to the extent of the existing garage with respect to proximity to the south lot line. Um, they're all minor in nature and, and essentially we find the proposal meets the four tests. Um, also the proposed development is comparable in scale and character to other recently approved applications on the street including number 158 directly across the street uh, and 161 next door as well uh, comparable um, developments at 165, 167, and 168 are also present. So we find it's very much in keeping with the context of the street and the neighborhood in general. The application not only has the support of the immediate neighbors, but also planning staff, and as you can see, um, Councillor Grimes, yes. the letter, which was submitted for record. Sure, you're okay with the planning condition that is being proposed? 100%. Okay, so yeah, you said the adjacent neighbors, but I assume we do have good segue. Uh, the neighbor at 157, which I assume is right next door, uh, is registered to speak, so we'll hear from her next, um, and if there's anything you'd like to add before that. Uh, no, I, my understanding was that the owner had spoken with, uh, with the direct neighbors, but uh, well, welcome we'll any comments for okay, sure. Okay, we'll see what she has to say. Maybe she's calling in to voice her support. That is, sure. That's permitted too. So um, <laughs> let's hear from uh, Catherine Adams at 157 Brentwood Road North. Good morning. Yes, I'd like to talk about, um, well, it's a detail in the staff report for the Committee of Adjustments application regarding the uh, Section 1. So on the third page of that staff report, uh, the application review, it says it references a covered, and then it goes on to say an uncovered, deck so there's um, a discrepancy there uh, yeah, I, I yeah i think what they're saying hold on the maximum permitted lot coverage is 33 percent and they're saying the increase in this case we have what's the coverage on this one 
They're looking for 42. The variance. 42. So they're pointing out that out of the 42.33, the actual house itself is 35.26, and the rest, the 7.07, .07, is occasioned due to the um, uncovered rear deck. Correct. I'm all, not, so I'm not all arguing they're pointing the percentages. Yeah. It's the fact that they were at one point uh, mentioned it as an uncovered rear deck, and then it's uh, proposed covered deck. So I'd like that clarified to be an uncovered deck. Okay, so let's have the, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, they refer to, maybe, I think that only it counts if it's covered. Maybe there's just a typo there, but let's hear from the uh, either staff and or uh, we'll get Mr. Sad to comment to that when his... Uh, when it's time, it's time to respond. Yeah, Mr. Okay, Sad will I'll confirm whether it's covered or uncovered. Actually, perhaps we can uh, look at ask Mr. Sad that right now while we have you on the line still. Yes, hello. Um, it's 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 Jim Sad speaking. Um, no, there was absolutely no intention to cover the deck. Okay. Excellent. So I'd like that clarified in the application review then. That it is a well, uncovered deck. Yeah. Perhaps I, I will point out that the drawings do not illustrate anything. Is that yeah. what it indicates in the drawings, Mr. Sad? Yes, absolutely. There, there's no. You can tell from the drawings that there's no. Um, there's no proposed covering of the deck. It is completely uncovered. And, and if we go by the drawings, that's yeah. that's essentially what was applied. Yeah. Okay, for. I see that. Yeah, the okay, condition I that planning is is asking for would actually reaffirm that because they're asking for it to be tied to the, uh, to the plan as it relates to the lot coverage. So your community planning is actually protecting that, that they can't go ahead and build a house that's, uh, that seven point what, uh, meters is, is covered by the deck, is covered as a bad, no pun intended, uh, that is uh, applicable to the deck. So that the actual coverage of the house, of the dwelling is the 35. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any other? That was the only thing you wanted clarified. Oh, just a couple short little points. I support the the, um, the staff report that says that there, it shall be uh, constructed as illustrated on the architectural plan submitted March 11th. Yes. I I um, am in favor of them. I, I, I that they're maintaining the front facade and the roof height. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that very much, okay. and I'd like to. Uh, stress that concern about water runoff because the roof size is now going to be more than twice the size and uh, especially on the south side towards us um, to avoid flooding of our house okay and we've had damage we've had damage already to our property and I'd like to stress that they don't access our property to build the house okay well they wouldn't couldn't do that without permission but you'll you'll that's a construction issue we don't deal with that we deal with the planning issues here so we'll let Mr. Okay. Mr. Sad just confirm in his response after you and the other speaker have spoken uh, with respect to um, issues taken with respect to water runoff or just uh, answer, re respond to that concern of yours. Um, so thank you. You're, that's all you'd like to say? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's just see if committee members have any questions for you before we move on to the next speaker. Okay, it doesn't appear to be. Uh, so the next speaker is from 56 Princeton Road, uh, either uh, Patricia or Wilma. Hi, Mr. Chairman. It will be uh, Wilma P. O. Vesson. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. It's Wilma P. O. Vesson speaking. Um, thank you. The, the reason for appearing before today as public hearing is uh, to voice some of concerns with the plans. Uh, in reviewing the proposed plans, uh, they initially seemed reasonable given that they were only seeking a minor variance. However, upon further review and based on these are anecdotal evidence of other properties in the neighborhood having substantially altered house plans following approval of a minor variance at the Committee of Adjustment, we wish to raise the following three issues that together give us uh, cause for concern. And they relate to the total lot coverage as a result of combining both the building structure and the open deck at the rear of the house to seek approval of a minor variance. Uh, number one, what we find puzzling is that the proposed lot coverage of the building structure alone amounts to 35.26%. Uh, 
in order to maximize floor space, rebuilt homes in this neighborhood, as the agent indicated, have typically sought approval for just under 40% of lot coverage for building structure. Uh, number two, the proposal also includes an uncovered open-sided rear deck of 7.07% of proposed lot coverage that spans the entire width of the addition. In combining the building structure of 35.26% of and an oversized deck of 7.07%, it now increases the lot coverage to 42.33%. I wish to emphasize that this oversized deck poses a privacy issue. The height and width of the proposed deck, along with its proximity to the property line, would not afford any privacy to our backyard nor to our neighbors uh, on either side uh, of this uh, house, even if a six and a half foot fence is built. And number three relates to the building structure roof height. It appears that the first floor ceiling height will be raised by approximately half a meter, yet the second floor ceiling height is not changing. According to the drawings, there is an allowable additional meter in roof height. So with exception to the height, width, and depth of the proposed rear deck, this proposal seems reasonable as the existing roof height is not changing and the addition to the existing building structure is only increasing by approximately 2% from the maximum permitted lot coverage of 33%. However, should this minor variance of 42.33% of lot coverage be approved without any stipulations, what is preventing the owner from going to Toronto Building and submitting revised plans from the ones approved by the Committee of Adjustment? They could now take advantage of the increased lot coverage to substantially alter the approved building structure to now include the area which was once the deck and using the entire 42.33% for the revised building structure. And as a result, pushing out a deck even further, thus seriously compromising our privacy. As I mentioned previously, given, um, other home, uh, other, given the anecdotal evidence of other homeowners in our area having done this in the past, we are concerned of the possibility that the proposed building structure will extend well beyond what is being proposed today. We live in a single story bungalow with the two bedrooms facing the back of the property. Privacy becomes a major issue should the scenario I mentioned occur. Given the proximity to the property line and especially when it would be a generous two story building plus an oversized deck. So should the committee of adjustment approve this minor variance with no stipulations, we believe that this could potentially open the door in seeking approval from Toronto Building to put up a much larger building structure as a result of this minor variance. Therefore, we ask that the committee stipulate that no changes to the building structure be permitted, particularly that the building structure not be increased beyond the 35% lot coverage as presented in the architectural plan submitted to the committee, and that the proposed rear deck be reduced in width and height. We reviewed the staff report and it appears that the planning staff have some of the same concerns as we do with respect to lot coverage. We would add to that recommendation that there be an adjustment made to the oversized deck as it impacts not only our property, but also the neighbors uh, on either side of the property. We thank you for the opportunity to express our concerns in this important process. Thank you, Ms. Piovson, for that uh, presentation. Um, I just allay your fears that, as you mentioned at the end, and your main concern is that somehow this building would grow to the total coverage, including the deck. But that's being clearly stipulated by community planning has the same concerns, and they would not be able to do that. I can tell you that 100%. I'll let the applicant answer the other questions. But in no way would they be able to do that without coming back to the committee. That's specifically being addressed. Your concern is the same concern as community planning. With respect to this, with the issue of the deck being oversized, I'll let the applicant respond to that. And I would note out there is no rear yard setback triggered by this variance. So um, now we've heard from both neighbors. Um, Mr. Sad, can you please, uh, your chance to respond? Yes, um, thank you both for your comments. I appreciate uh, uh, understanding the neighbor's point of view, and I'm sure the owner, Mr. Renard, would do whatever he could to appease and make sure that those issues are addressed. 
Um, there, as we've all noted here, the, the, the acceptance of these variances would be tied to the drawings and there is absolutely no intention to build out over that increased lot coverage that's associated with the deck. Uh, the deck will remain a deck, it will remain uncovered and, um, you know, tying it to the drawings, I think, alleviates any of those concerns, as, as Mr. Cherry pointed out. Um, with regards to privacy, um, I'm not so sure that there's a privacy issue uh, with number 56 Princeton Road. I mean, there, as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, there's, there's no rear yard setback issue um, or variance being requested. And so I believe the distance from the rear property line is adequate. Um, if there were concerns with it being the width that it is, the width of the proposed addition, and any concerns over privacy uh, with the north and south neighbors, I believe that could be handled with some adequate screening at the deck height of six feet, uh, be it some kind of uh, wood screening or something even more uh, translucent rather than opaque, such as uh, an acid etched glass or frosted glass, if you will. I can throw out those two proposals, but um, I did not hear any direct issues or complaints from the north and south neighbors. And uh, I don't agree that there is an, a privacy issue with, uh, with the rear neighbor, the neighbor to the rear. Okay. In terms of uh, the next door neighbors, you mentioned some concerns that are not don't deal with us in terms of access and construction, but you'll be dealing with uh, the construction issues uh, sort of separately. Yes, absolutely. Those won't be taken lightly. Those will, I'm sure Mr. Renard will ensure that uh, we take care of the grading in, in a proper manner to, uh, to avoid any potential runoff issues onto the south property and north, be it, be it as it may. And uh, definitely with access to construction, um, as you had mentioned, Mr. Chair, there, that is restricted to his own property unless he seeks permission otherwise. Thank you. Um Committee members, any follow-up questions uh, for either the agent or any of the neighbors who've spoken, or is someone ready to weigh in with the motion? Danny Bellissimo would like to make a motion. Yes, sir. I'd like to move approval of the variances subject to the condition by planning. Find the variances are minor in nature. Okay, so a motion to approve the application. I'm happy to second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, neighbors, and thank you, Mr. Sad. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we, I have a couple of brand new users who I don't know who they are. Okay. So somebody just called in with the phone number 905680. Can you identify yourself, please? Call in user with the number that begins with the digits, 905-680. Diane Harper? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Sorry. I, uh, I couldn't hear what you were saying very well. Okay. So I wasn't... That's I, fine. As long as I know that you're here... Verbally. Okay, great. Thank um, you. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Now, I have another user who I don't have their surname, but I have their name, Samir. Hello, Samir? Yep, that's me. Yes. Can you identify what item you're here to speak on, please? Okay. I un Samir, I unmuted you, so don't mute yourself back. Hello? Sorry, I'm having a hard time. It's, it's, it's not coming through well. Okay, I can hear you now. So what item are you here to speak on? We're for item number seven. Item number seven? I don't have you registered here. Okay, well, only registered speakers will be allowed to speak. I have another user who who's it's I Y A M U Yamu. You can see me, boss. Yes. Hello. Uh, we just see the door knocker. 
Uh, oops, no coin for optic. Okay, I, yeah. So no one's paying attention. And the final person is uh, Andrew Bigart. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. And just to confirm, you are for item. Um, I'm uh, the 15. lawyer here representing the adjacent property owner, and the uh, number is 15 on your yes. list. Yes, Birchview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, one last time to try with Samir. Hello? Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter because they're not a registered speaker. Okay, Mr. Chair, you can continue. Sorry about okay. that. No problem. Okay, we're on to item number 311 Fifth Street. It's an application to construct a partial third floor addition and a third story platform. Uh, there are uh, four variances. We have a previous Committee of Adjustment application from May 2001. We have a planning report for information pointing out that the third floor addition is minor. They mention the uh, prevailing character of the um, of massing and scale. Um, to dwellings in the area, transportation as ad, um, advising that uh, uh, parking in the Lakeshore Drive right away is not available, but that street parking permits is available, and there are actually 53 spaces out of 86 available. We have support from 59 Lakeshore Drive, and that's all we have. We have registered to speak the agent, Jennifer Scholes, as well as the neighbor at 3 Fifth Street. Mr. Chairman, the neighbor at 3 Fifth Street will not be joining us today. Okay. So all we have is Jennifer Schultz, the agent. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Did you want me to make a presentation? Well, first start off with giving us your name and address. And my name is Jennifer Schultz, and my address is 68 Wimbledon Road. Thank you. Yeah, we have the planning report for information um, and the transportation comments. I assume you're... Uh, You've reviewed that. So let's just see, committee members, would you require a presentation on this application? No, they're shaking their head in the negative. So let's, why don't we just see, unless you'd like to just add anything, uh, let's see if someone has any questions for you. Is there anything you'd like to point out before we do that? Um, no, actually, the, the client has already um, addressed the parking issue and has applied for a parking permit on okay, the street. Great. So. Wonderful. That's all been addressed. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have the explanation why the floor space index being uh, high because of the small lot. Um, committee members, any questions? Or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion on this? Um, if there are no speakers, I thought you said there was a speaker. Did I misunderstand? Yeah, no, the speaker was registered, but they're not going to join us. Okay, well, in that case, I've carefully reviewed the plans and I find that the variances are minor in nature and move for approval. Thank you, Mr. Uh, that's subject to, oh yeah, planning is just for comments, for sure. There's no conditions. Seconded for Mr. Bellissimo's motion. So, Sophia Reddick, I'll second that. Thank you, Ms. Reddick. All in favor? Another unanimous approval. Thank you, Ms. Scholes. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, our next application is item number four, 355 Burnham, Burnham Thorpe Road, and this is to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage, and there are four variances. Uh, we have revised plans dated April 29th, uh, zoning waiver, cover letter, uh, forestry comments, we're looking for variant of their conditions two and five, um, three letters of opposition. Uh, one of them I noted uh, was from someone with no address provided saying I live close. That's, I don't know if that person's right. Yeah, I think they're registered to speak from five, uh, looks like it's 559 Burnham Thorpe, someone with the same name. And uh, that's it, I guess. We have a supplemental material. We have applicants' response to the opposition. So um, we have registered to speak the agent. Okay, that's in the last package. Yes. So they no longer have concerns. There is no longer a forestry condition. Okay. Okay, so the agent is Elena Lacheva, and then we have the neighbors registered to speak from 353 and 359 and 361 Burnham Thorpe. Ms. Lacheva? Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
do you want me to have a presentation? I believe you should because we do have three people here with uh, who registered to speak. I assume that possibly means they have concerns. Um, okay, can I start? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, we're proposing to to build um, a two-story house, and we have four uh, variances. The first one is uh, floor space index of forty-six percent which is 1% uh, percent over the maximum allowed. The, the second and third are height for uh, main wall and uh, soffit height. The, the, the overall height of the building complies with the zoning. The fourth variance is for second floor uh, platforms. We have uh, one on the front and one on the back. They're over the front porch and over a covered deck respectfully uh, 6.2 square meters and 10 square meters. Um, urban forestry, uh, there was some uh, miscommunication regarding a uh, uh, city-owned tree on, in front of the building, which was missing from the site plan, but, but we uh, addressed this, um, we updated the site plan and um, the issue was resolved. Okay, regarding the neighbors objecting, uh, from 353, their main concern is the privacy in their sunroom from the rear balcony and the window on the second floor bathroom. Uh, we added the privacy screen on the plants on the side of the balcony and for the window in the, in the bathroom, we uh, rotated it to be horizontal and uh, moved it up uh, at uh, five and a half feet seal height. Uh, we presented um, the neighbors with detailed uh, answers and, and diagrams, and we hope these changes, um, which we made in good faith, are satisfying their concerns. The neighbor from 359, this is one house, house over to the west, they were uh, concerned by the presence of second floor balconies, uh, noise, um, and we met with them in person, uh, presented the plans, discussed them, and we believe that uh, our explanations were satisfying for them. Um, based on all of this, uh, we believe that the variance is a minor and a respectful and fit well into the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Lucheva. Just want to point out when I did my opening, I mentioned letters of opposition. There are also four people in in support, of signed in support, and including the next door neighbor, 357 Burnham Thord, uh, as well as the neighbors at three, at, um, yeah, they signed twice. Also, 351 Burnham Thorpe is also in support. Okay, so does anyone have any questions for um, the agent before we move on to hear from the neighbors? Okay, in that case, we'll move on to um, the next door neighbor on the other side. Um, either uh, Chuan Yin Li or Yuni Quian. Can you speak? Yeah, to I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you are? I'm Chuan Li. Okay. Because yeah, we, we only have one speaker from a household. So you'll be speaking, sir? Yeah, okay. okay uh, so I didn't speak. Right, so you're living right next door. Can you let us uh, let us know what your concerns are? Uh, yes, I guess the agent you do have your letter. Uh, yeah. yeah, mentioned my my point. Yeah, one is uh, I guess the influence comes mainly from one is the shadow of the house, and uh, and the privacy it caused from the uh, rear side balcony and the side window. Uh, as I was explained, the height of the house is within the limit of the city bylaw. Uh, um, but it does have a uh, shadow, and at least some emulation. Yeah, it will have influence to the sunshine, the sunroom. But I guess that that's what it is. That's not my main concern. My main concern is uh, the privacy, because the side window it just uh, from the second floor is right uh, above the sunroom, uh, and it, but we measure roughly 
11 feet far, far away from the sun. Uh, from there, you see we have a lot of activities inside the sunroom. We hope uh, uh, either to move the, the window up to the roof or remove it. Because they got a window on the north side already. Uh, we talked to this uh, with the agent, uh, with that email. We haven't heard it back yet about the final decision. Uh, yeah, they did. I really did propose that. I guess agent mentioned earlier. Yeah, to to provide some bushes and turn the the directions. But I would believe the correct way is to remove it or move it to the roof. And plus, they got another window already on the north side. Um, uh, also, I, I want to confirm the privacy screen is is a permanent uh, setup or not? Because I'm not sure if it's just uh, uh, just something can be temporary or because uh, we're we're talking about permanent building here, right? Yeah, on that point, I guess if the committee made it a condition, then it would have to remain permanently. If I can just interject with that comment. Please continue. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And actually, Thank can you. staff put up Mr. Um, Mr. Lee's presentation on the screen? Because it shows the location of the sunroom, and it shows actually a picture of the sunroom. You can see it on his plan. Yes. He shows where it would go, uh, relative location between the proposed two-story house and the sunroom. And then there's some pictures of this uh, sunroom. Perhaps yeah. get it up on the screen. She where that would be in relation to because it looks. I guess it faces the rear, right? Your sunroom. You showed us some pictures of it. Yeah, yeah. The sunroom is on the rear part of the house. Right. So would it north. be on the side where you have right now have the uh, looks like an armchair, or on the uh, other side yeah. where there's a lamp and a table? It's yeah. on the side, right? So, okay. So, I just the committee members can see that. So, thank you for your uh, comments. And uh, like I said, um, the applicant has been listening and will respond to your concerns when it's his chance to uh, rebut what the neighbors have said. Okay. Thank you. You, and, you and, and the other neighbor on the other side, obviously, who is in support, are the most directly affected. And now we'll hear from the neighbor two doors away, who's written in, uh, I believe, two letters. Um, or at least his uh, spouse or partner did, um, Andrew Alsner at 359. Yes, so you're one house over, right, Mr. Alsner? I'm, I'm the second house over, correct? Right. I'm not right. the next door neighbor, but the one next to that. Right. And we have your wife's, uh, your partner's uh, letters here. Correct. Yep. Yes. So uh, what I'd like to just make a, about three points here, mainly concerning the backyard uh, second floor balcony. Uh, in the, I'm, I'm looking at right now the revised plans, uh, the, the elevation A07 plan. Can we get that uh, up, shows, Yeah. Uh, if you can get that up, that'd be nice. A, A07? Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what they've done is they revised the guardrail for the second floor balcony to five foot eight or one point seven three meters. Uh, the width of that whole balcony in this kind of uh, this kind of plan is nineteen feet wide by five foot eight deep, which amounts to, uh, let's say, uh, and put it in meters anyway, uh, 10 square meters, whereas the maximum permitted uh, area should be around four square meters uh, by, by, law, by code. So this is uh, more than twice the allotted uh, area for a balcony. But I'd like to also point out a couple of things in that this is only the guardrail that I see at five foot eight. The overhanging structure on the main floor balcony is still uh, 10 feet uh, to the back, which uh, after the building is completed, doesn't prevent anyone from extending the guardrail on the second floor balcony to that full 10 foot, uh, 10 foot uh, depth, let's call it. Uh, 
mainly the, the main reason that, that we are concerned about that is is number one of course uh, privacy even for a couple houses back but the main uh, concern is uh, dealing with um, uh, the the noise that that might uh, come from there uh, there's no stopping anyone from having uh, parties up top there if need be uh, especially if it's 10 foot uh, deep um, so that was our main concern is the, the privacy and the noise value. The third uh, point that I'd like to show is that there is nothing stopping anyone from enclosing that main floor balcony and converting it into a extended uh, living space in the house. Uh, so that, that's uh, a concern of mine as well. You're just uh, making the house bigger in that sense. So there's, there's those three points in that. Uh, those are the things I'd like to present at this point in time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alzner. I'll just, I'll just, I would point out to lay your fears that you, we're, we're, we're granting approvals here today, and if they come back for more, so if this, the area of the platform, and we'll, I always like to ask, and we'll hear what rooms those are off, it's less likely to be an area for a party if it's off a bedroom and off a common area. But if he was to extend it, I see what you mean, the bod, the the, the ground floor covered deck goes out further. If they extended it further, I guess they'd be in violation and it's a com the neighbors would complain and there would be an order to comply and they'd uh, either have to go back to committee. So it's, we're granting permissions here. If someone okay. goes beyond okay. the permissions, we can't, you know, we can't anticipate that. But Thank I, you. I see you have concern with the, the area of the balcony as presented. It's still 10 meters. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's still, still 10, 10 square back, meters. The back Correct. One. You have no problem with yep. the front balcony? Uh, personally, no. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we'll hear from uh, the applicant in response. And the last speaker is Laura, your next door neighbor at 361, either uh, Laura Fabrice or Evan Celio. Mr. Chairman, it will be uh, Mr. Evan Celio. Okay. Uh, yes. Good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, like uh, like Andrew, I'm I'm uh, three doors down uh, from from this location from this um, address. But I have the same concerns. I have an issue with uh, the overall height of the building. Uh, you know, there's no reason to keep it to the uh, uh, to the code. Uh, same with the, the uh, balcony as well. Um, from my view, um, I can see that home. I'll be able to see that balcony. And even though being three doors down, I can I would be able to see that, and that would be a problem. Again, privacy more so for the neighboring immediate neighbors, but. Um, uh, even further down, it would be visible. Um, the overall, again, the overall balcony size is uh, more than double. Um, it's, it should, you know, there's no reason why it needs to be that, that large. Uh, it should stick to uh, the code, and that's uh, pretty much. I built a home uh, not too long ago, and I can, you know, I conform to the code. There's no reason why we can't keep to the code as well. Okay, thanks. So, I'm gonna pause. Okay. Uh, committee members, anyone have any questions for Mr. Cilio or Mr. Osner or uh, the other neighbor? Or uh, we'll go back to the applicant for uh, rebuttal, unless anyone would like to weigh in at this point with a question or comment. Okay. I, I do have a question for um, the neighbor at, I think it's 353. Um, I believe when I looked at the photographs, it looked to me like your kitchen uh, was also severely affected. It would be more affected, I think, than the sunroom. Is that correct? Did you were you the one that submitted the photograph of your kitchen? My kitchen sunroom. I'm sorry. Is there a kitchen too? Uh, there was a kitchen photo that was included in that package. I believe it was your kitchen, and uh, you had blocked out a window in that. No, 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 we didn't provide a picture for a kitchen. A kitchen is inside. The kitchen is uh, oh, next to the south side. It's opposite the way of a sunroom. Yeah, but it won't have any influence to, to my kitchen. The main thing is the uh, sunroom, and then we are concerned about the privacy from that window. So we enjoy the sunroom. We have a uh, lots of activities uh, inside. Uh, so we we have really concerned that privacy. Yes, it's a beautiful sunroom. It is. I really enjoyed. 
Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that because I thought there was a kitchen photograph that showed actually a, a blocked window, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we just saw the picture. You just submitted the picture of your sunroom, correct? It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or let's hear from uh, Ms. Lecheva. We seem to have a lot of concern with the size of the, uh, of the second floor rear balcony, 10 meters. Uh, the balcony uh, was actually, the size of the balcony was approved by um, the planning. They, they requested to, go, to be below or equal to 10 square meters, and they didn't have concern about that. Uh, and the balconies, uh, both of the balconies are actually uh, attached to a bedroom. And it, they, are not, they are not public spaces to have uh, parties over there. And um, the concern of, of uh, 353 uh, Birkenthorpe Road, I, I submitted a, a study for the uh, sunlight and for the privacy of the sunroom. We met a number of times with these neighbors and we, we, were, we, we wanted to resolve uh, their concerns in uh, good faith. Uh, the distance between the sunroom and the second floor is uh, 19, 19 feet nine between the two walls. And also I, I presented a diagram uh, showing a person standing on the second floor uh, bedroom looking out and there is no way to see inside the sunroom. Um, and we did all these changes in good faith and we believe um, if we follow the, the drawings, the uh, resubmitted drawings, uh, their privacy is not going to affect it. If you have any questions. Okay, anyone have any questions for, anyone have any follow-up questions for the agent or any of the neighbors for that matter? Is someone ready for a motion? Uh, Danny, but it's a more quick question for the, uh, the agent. Uh, that balcony in question, the privacy screen is just on one side. Uh, the other side does not have a privacy screen and that's closer to the other homes, is that correct? Uh, the neighbor on uh, on the other side doesn't have a uh, concern. They, they, they actually gave us a supporting letter. Yeah. Oh, I see. So if, we put, if we put the privacy screen only on the side of the 353. So just on the one side, not the one that's closest to the house. Okay, thank yeah. you. I just yeah. wanted to clarify that because it wasn't clear, but I can see that now. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Just waiting for someone to weigh in with a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, Donald Taylor speaking. Yes. Um, I don't see that platforms adjacent to bedrooms uh, cause concerns about uh, partying. That combined with the fact that the largest platform is only about 110 square feet that doesn't accommodate much of a party. So um, I, I'm not going to consider uh, the comments made in that respect in my overall view on this, which is that the four variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move uh, approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Do you have a second for Mr. Taylor's I'm motion? Happy to second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Ms. Lacheva. Thank, Thank you, sir. neighbors. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Great. Okay. Uh, next application is item number 546, Bannon Avenue. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are five variances. Um, we have a cover letter, supporting materials. Uh, we have uh, from PA uh, Strategies. We have four letters of support. 43, 44, 45, 47. We have concerns from 42. Uh, 44 and 48 are opposed. And planning has weighed in. They would, in their March 31st memo, requesting a condition of approval that 
be built, be built uh, constructed as illustrated in the site plan dated March 15th as relates to the length and depth. And we only have one speaker, the agent, Peter uh, Milzen. Good, uh, uh, good morning. And we have good four morning, letters Mr. of support. Sorry, four letters of support as well. Very important. I mentioned. Yeah, I did mention. Okay, welcome, sir. So we, we have some letters of concern and letters of support. No one is here to speak to this matter other than yourself. Uh, would you like to make a uh, brief presentation to the committee or just uh, respond to questions? Or just anything you'd like to advise uh, if you're not making a presentation? I don't believe we uh, I'll just make a, a brief presentation, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as was stated, there's five variances being sought. Uh, as you turn your mind to the application, um, I want you to consider something uh, that's very unique about this property. Uh, this property is uh, 65 meters deep, so that's about 214 feet. And it's not a ravine lot, it's not a wood lot. Uh, on this block of Bannon, there are five extraordinarily deep lots. Uh, this application is for one of them, it's actually for the center lot of the five. So there's two similar lots to the east and two similar lots to the west. Uh, so it's an extraordinarily large lot. And uh, I submit that the variances uh, are all minor. The, the lot coverage of uh, this proposal is only 23% as opposed to the 33% which is uh, permitted. So there's, uh, uh, even though there's variances for length and depth, uh, the site is not being uh, maximized to its full uh, use, so to speak, uh, in terms of the lot coverage. Uh, the length and the depth, as was outlined in uh, the planning uh, report, uh, a large portion of the uh, extended length and depth is attributable to a one-story uh, breakfast uh, extension uh, in the uh, northwest corner of the property. So it, uh, it won't really be visible to, to the east. It'll be somewhat visible uh, to the west. Um, otherwise, the length and depth are, are fairly close to what the bylaw requires. There is an increase uh, in the gross floor area that's being achieved uh, as a result of the third floor, um, which will be uh, a home office uh, set up for the owners of the property. Um, and that's at 0 0.58 FSI, which is certainly uh, not uh, out of keeping with many other proposals uh, in the Kingsway that have been approved. Um, there is a slight increase in the height of the roof of uh, an additional 0.38 meters. Uh, that really uh, results in a, in a steeper pitch of the roof to accommodate that uh, third floor uh, space. However, there's also a, a hip roof at the rear, so that uh, reduces the impact on, on the abutting neighbors. Uh, and uh, there is a request for side yard setbacks uh, to be relaxed um, uh, to uh, 0.9 and 0.8 meters, but that is only uh, at the front of the house for the first uh, 5.9 meters of the house, not for the entire length and depth of the house. And the reason for that particular variance is it is, um, even though it's an extraordinarily deep lot, it is only a 40 foot wide lot and uh, the owners would like uh, a functioning uh, single car garage at the front and then to have a symmetrical facade uh, and a fairly classic Georgian uh, design uh, that results in a slight incursion into the uh, side yard setbacks only at the front. Uh, we're uh, aware of uh, the concerns raised by the neighbors. Yep. Uh, my client uh, met with them, uh, spoken with them. Uh, I want to note that number uh, 48 is a, a new build, uh, which was also built with, uh, with a number of variances uh, a few years ago. Uh, my clients have actually been uh, careful and considerate in uh, how they've cited this house. Uh, that house at number 48 has a very prominent architectural feature at the front with sort of a 
uh, bay window, um, which faces uh, partially east. And uh, because of the front yard setback that my clients are proposing, uh, that affords uh, you know a lot of light and privacy uh, for number 48 for that uh, prominent architectural feature to be allowed to to really uh, stand on its own and, and be seen and provide the residents there with hey, Would you like to wrap up, please? You're at almost at five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at uh, number 44, they've raised a number of uh, concerns. It, it is an older house. I want to point out that the separation between uh, this proposal and the abouting house will be approximately five meters. So they're uh, set very far apart um, and I don't believe there's really any significant impacts from, from this proposal on that house. Hey, thank you. Any questions for uh, the agent? We do not have any other speakers. We did have the two uh, long letters from 44 and 48 and we also have the letters of support from 43, 44, 45 and 47. Sorry, I mentioned 44 both in support and in concern but I do have a question. Yep. Um, Go ahead, Ms. I do have a question of the agent. In terms of the uh, front yard setback, how does that um, work with number 48? Are you bringing the house forward a little bit to match that uh, facade, or are you leaving the existing footprint as is? No, we're actually setting the house further, further back. back. We're okay. increasing the, the setback. The existing house um, is uh, about in, in line with number 48. Uh, our proposed uh, design would uh, set it back an additional uh, three meters, three and a half meters. So uh, that's in keeping with the character of that portion of the block, where as you go from west to east, each house is set a little bit further back. Right. And number 44 is set back even further. So you're going to be somewhere in between 48 and 44 in terms of setback. Is that correct? Roughly about halfway between the two. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I just would point out we did actually have a petition letter signed by 44. So we have them both signing that and then as well their letter of concern. So it was at some point signed. Remember this application was originally supposed to be heard back in April. Okay, any other questions for any of the speakers or uh, someone ready for a motion? Uh, Danny Bellissimo is ready for a motion. Uh, I don't see any front yard setback issues here. Uh, is, am I missing a variance there? So I just want to clarify before I have that motion. Laura, can you speak up, speak to that? Did, were there, was there? No, I'm just no. looking at oh, the uh, okay. actual, I'm looking at the actual uh, street at the moment. Just okay, that's fine. Yeah. No, well, I thought I thought I missed something. No, no <laughs> I haven't seen the front yard step up here. It says fine. So um, yeah, I'm I'm ready to make uh, a motion for approval of the variance of the fine and minor in nature, subject to the condition by planning and the condition by forestry. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Seconded for Mr. Bellissimo's motion. Ms. Alderson. Happy to second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very thank much, you, Mr. Milson. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item number 6, 35 Yorkview Drive. Uh, this is an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are three variances. Uh, we have a cover letter, 11, uh, 11 neighbors in support. Transportation has no objection. Uh, there is no planning report. Now, members, I believe it shows that there's a planning report in our bookmark here transportation or transportation planning report but always she hears that there's uh, no objection um, and there also only uh, we have speakers on this Arben Spatty the agent for the applicant at 35 and the neighbor right next door is registered to speak 33 Yorkview Drive Mr. Spatty oh. yes Welcome. Okay, so we have transportation has no objection. We have 11 letters of support. We do have a neighbor here with concerns. So if you'd like, you can make a short presentation or if you want, uh, committee members, uh, 
Perhaps you can just wait to hear what the concerns are from the neighbor, unless you already know what those concerns are. I, I don't know the neighbor's concern, but uh, I'm prepared to hear from the neighbors, from the neighbor at number 33. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions, though, for Mr. Spatty before we hear from the neighbor at 33 as to what their concerns are? Ms. Did someone put up their hand? No? That's coffee. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, let's hear from uh, Wendy Fisher, 33 York View. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Wendy Fisher. I own number 33 York View Drive, with, which is adjacent to Yep. 35 York View on the east side. Unfortunately, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to share my views on the requested variances. I see that as part of the application process, the owners of 35 York View submitted 11 consent letters from residents as far away as nine doors down on one end of the street and seven doors down on the other end that failed to engage with me at any point, um, even though my house is right next door. So they never um, approached you for a letter? They never asked you if you had any concerns? No. Interesting. So I currently rent the house out, and I know my tenant does uh, talk to the owners of 35 York View on occasion. So they could have reached out to my tenant for my contact information. I currently live one street away. I've been working from home for the past year, so it would have been easy to get in touch with me. Um, I would have appreciated if they could have explained the variances to me and showed me the plan so my concerns could have been addressed at that time rather than here in front of the committee. And um, I just feel there's a lot involved in building a house and building relationships with both adjacent homeowners should be the first step to ensure the process goes as smooth as possible. For sure. So the first thing I would like to bring to the committee's attention is I think uh, it appears there's an error on the site plan and the surveyor's project report. The drawings show that 33 York View is located on the west side of 35 York View, and number 37 is located on the east side. This is incorrect, and I request to have the documents corrected to show the correct location of each house. Sorry, is that on the survey, or is it on, on, the, on the plans, their, their, oh. their construction plans? Just to clarify yeah, where so. they say that's an in error. Um, the document is called the site plan. Yeah, okay. So it's not the and then the, it's the site plan. Okay, we'll point that out to Mr. Spatty and he'll redress that on his uh, rebuttal. It, it's also reflects on the survey. So the survey is wrong? Yeah. Okay. The two documents are incorrect. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the variance I'm concerned about is the height of the proposed house and the impact on my property. Um, included in the mass height and bulk of this development is a ceiling to floor window, which actually goes between floors. And this will overlook my house and my backyard. Um, the window is located in high traffic stairwell and is located approximately three quarters of the way down the house and creates a visual intrusion into my backyard. Um, I don't feel there's a reason for the owners to look into my backyard every time they use their stairs. Um, if they're putting in such a large window to increase the amount of light that enters the house, um, there's currently um, a skylight directly above the stairway as well as another skylight above the landing at the top of the stairs. And I think this would provide more than enough light. Um, there's a loss of privacy related to the mass height and bulk of the house and this window that comes with it. Um, I feel the intrusion is incompatible with the character of the neighborhood as a number of the new builds have not included windows of this size at the size of uh, the sides of the house and it will erode my privacy and create a loss of enjoyment of my backyard. I'm a single woman and this brings a degree of discomfort to me and I find it a little creepy. Um, I'll accept variance number two with in condition that the window not be included in the plans or that it be made substantially smaller. And that's it. Thank you. I don't know if, if Mr. Corvalino, is that is that a variance? The open, you know, stairwell uh, full height windows, does that trigger any of the variances that were before us or 
it's sort of a design feature. I appreciate there's a privacy concern, but just wanted to see before we go back to the applicant as to, um, first of all, why his, you know, you know, consulted with this neighbor with respect to, you know, even as the construction goes with building issues and things like that. But um, I just want to know about this concern, whether it triggers any of the variances. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's hear then. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Fisher about uh, her concerns before we go back to Mr. the applicant or agent rather to uh, get his reply to her concerns? Okay. Mr. Shabati? Yes. Uh, and regarding the height of the building, hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, regarding the height of the building, actually in uh, three sides, sides, uh, sides it's uh, 7.2 meter, but it's only on the front is 7.84, and uh, this is calculated because of the parapet wall, which uh, is an architectural feature. But on the side of the rear, it is only 7.2 meter. So this is why the 7.84 meter height on the front. But I don't think this should be a concern because this is only an architectural feature. It's just a parapet wall. Uh, regarding the windows, the owner is talking. Uh, when we apply for permit, we may have to look after the percentage we are allowed, which is 7%. And we will try to maintain that uh, the windows are going to be maybe removed, not to, to be in front of the neighbor's windows for the reason of privacy. Actually, myself, I didn't check where this window exactly goes, but we can avoid this thing to be far away from the neighbor's window. Uh, regarding the setback in this site, we comply on the neighbor. It's, it's a piece of 1.49 meter. Uh, Regarding the survey, the numbers, uh, I think the lady is right. I went in my site plan considering the surveyor, but uh, this is going to be changed right away when I apply for permit. Because I got the numbers from the surveyor I put in my site plan, but uh, for sure it's going to be changed when I apply for permit. Yeah, so is, there, is, it, is it been flipped? Is it wrong on the survey also? Yes, because uh, in, in my site plan, I, I saw number 33, like number 30. I mean, it's, it's a change of numbers there, and I worked with a surveyor plan. I didn't want to have a difference between my site plan and surveyor, but it looks like the surveyor put it wrong, which uh, it can be corrected. Sorry, I can't hear you. I can't. Yes. Okay, so the survey, if you look at the survey, just to clarify for everyone, um, number 33 shows it's lot 39, and it shows lot 41 uh, as lot 37, so it actually should be inverted. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that can be corrected. That's not uh, before you submit your final drawings. You'll have that corrected, correct, Mr. Spatty? Yes, for sure. Okay. It has okay. to be corrected. Okay, so please continue. Sorry. Uh, so yes, you, this is what I'll have to say. So do you know how, I just would like you to comment, you're, you, got a, you submitted 11 letters of support, but yet the next-door neighbor, who's most directly affected, I'm not sure we have one from the neighbor at the other side, um, and she says she was never contacted. Now, I know she doesn't live there. She doesn't live in the house. She has tenants there. But did your client try to attempt to contact, uh, you know, to discuss this project? Well, the, the owner, number 37, the other one, they, they approved it. And it's number 34, 36, 37, 41, 42, 43, all around the house. But the owner, <laughs> he tried to, to contact the lady. I mean, number number 33, but it was impossible, so... 
Okay. Anyway, she oh, says she we, lives, we her tenants, copy. she told, tenants told whoever came that uh, where she lives and who she is, but no one contacted mm -hmm. her. But let me just point out she, that assuming yeah, this proceeds, she around. should be included in the, uh, you know, in discussions regarding construction and things of that nature, assuming this, if, if this gets approved. Okay. The owner went all around to get uh, approval before we do, if we are thinking to do any change and they got this approval from the neighborhood, couldn't, couldn't contact number 33. Okay. And uh, because there were tenants over there, so it, it was impossible. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Spatty. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Spatty or is someone ready to make a motion or for that matter, a question for the neighbor? If the other members do not have any questions, Danny Bellesimo is ready to make a motion. Thank you. Um, I find that the variances are minor in nature and move for approval subject to condition by forestry. Okay, thank you. Your for uh, condition number one, I believe that is. Seconder for that motion. Give someone to second that. We'll second the motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank All you. in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Spotty, and thank you, Ms. Fisher. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven is 457 Martin Grove Road. It's our next application. It is for a two-story front addition. And there are, there's only one variance, the location from the front, the front yard setback. We have on this application um, supplemental material, supporting material, uh, five letters of opposition. And uh, registered to speak is uh, the agent, Yama Assad, as well as the neighbors at, uh, only one neighbor at 455, because we also have the actual owner present on the line, available for questions. So we do have one the neighbor next door with concerns. Uh, we do not have uh, any, yeah, we do have letters on this as well. As I mentioned, five letters. Okay, so um, Mr. Assad, or Yama Assad, I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Is Yama It's Assad? a man, Yama. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Mr. Good Chairperson. Morning, um, uh, and committee members, uh, my name is Yama Assad uh, of 320 Tweedsmere Avenue. Um, I'll be uh, making the case for the uh, single uh, minor variance application on behalf of my uh, clients. Yeah, so it's the front yard setback. Yeah, so it's the front yard setback. Um, I'd like to make my presentation with the supplemental information uh, that the was submitted. Okay, you want to put that up on the screen, Mr. Moderator? The uh, supporting materials. I see you have some 3D drawings here. Uh, model of the house, okay. Okay, so the property is situated, as you can see, south of Eglinton and west of the Toronto Hydro easement, as shown in the illustration. It's right at the at the rear of the uh, the property, and uh, and and along that uh, stretch of development. Um, so, um, um, my my clients, uh, as a young growing family of four. Uh, I'll put this proposal in motion in order to remain nestled uh, in this uh, neighborhood. The owners originally bought this property back in uh, 2015, mainly because of its potential to possibly accommodate an extension due to the size of the land. Um, should their family grow, if we can move to the next uh, slide, we could see it. Uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, you could see the, the property uh, right now uh, has that triangular shape, uh, which is... Um, due to the easement, uh, Toronto Hydro easement uh, at the back. Um, the idea is to build an extension at the front of the house facing Martin Grove Road as um, this seems to be the only viable solution or location to extend outwards uh, due to the shape of the lot. And if we can move to the next uh, slide. Um, so that green illustrates where the um, addition uh, the proposed addition will be uh, happening um, because uh, you know we have uh, we can't ex extend to the back or to the side uh, due to the restrictions uh, um, 
you know, we, we would be triggering two, two different uh, side yard setback uh, if, we, if we were to do that. Uh, and, and the narrowness would make it impossible, uh, you know, to, to add uh, the addition on the uh, north side of the existing property. Um, so um, the data is provided here. We're, we're well below the uh, allowed uh, density index, which is 45.45. Uh, we're at uh, 0.38 with the uh, proposed, as well as the lot coverage uh, currently is 33%, and uh, we're well below that at uh, approximately 19%. Um, if we could move to the next slide. So the, uh, the red represents the existing uh, property and then the, the dark green represents the two story, story addition and then the light green represents uh, one story addition, mainly that's the, uh, the new proposed uh, entranceway into the, uh, the house. Um, okay, if we can move to the next slide. So that's the property right now facing Martin Grove Road um, with a um, uh, front, uh, Front yard setback of, uh, I believe it's uh, 19 meters. Sorry, 19 feet. Um, let me just double check that. Sorry, 30 feet. Currently, uh, the, the the front yard setback is uh, at 30 feet, and with the proposed uh, addition, uh, we'll be uh, reducing that front yard setback to 15, um, approximately 16 feet. Um, okay, so we can move to the next slide. Um, I just wanted you guys to have a look. So that's what, you know, just a quick 3D of what that addition would look like um, uh, with a proposed new uh, renovated uh, roof because the current roof uh, needs uh, major maintenance. Um, we can uh, move to the next slide. Uh, so, uh, that's more of a, a detail of the basement plan. So the extension includes a basement extension. And then we can move to the next slide, please. There's the, uh, the ground uh, extension with the proposed um, uh, living room uh, in, a, in an actual family room and a uh, entrance uh, vestibule in the light green. And then we can move to the next slide, please. So on the second floor, the existing uh, bedroom um, will turn into a, an ensuite and the addition portion will become a, uh, a bedroom. Yes, sir, you're, you're approaching five minutes. Would you like to wrap up, please? Yeah, so uh, we, we can move to the next slide. And that's what it looks like facing Martin Grove. Uh, we're keeping in line with the existing heights. Uh, None of those variances are being triggered. Uh, next slide, please. And then that's what it would look like when it's finished. Uh, the entire addition and the existing will be cladded in, in, in the same material for consistency and the entrance, which is nestled, uh, tucked away between the addition and the existing um, will be cladded in wood uh, just to give it a warm feeling. And the, uh, the ground floor of the addition would be uh, some um, sort of maybe a limestone uh, material and a uh, the new roof uh, for the existing end the new would be a uh, standing seam uh, metal type um so i think that's it uh in terms thank of you. yeah you're over five minutes yeah. thank you for that presentation as we know we only have the one variance the front yard setback on this application yeah and mm, we I have think one, it's clear, spe yeah. one speaker registered in addition to the agent. Uh, does anyone have any questions for the agent before we move on to that speaker? Okay, so the next speaker, or the only speaker, is Madhumita Ghosh at 455 Martin Grove, right next door. And we have, that's one of the four letters of objection we have in our package. I believe it is the first letter. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, this is regarding the two-story front addition and how we are concerned about that is the front addition of the building will obstruct the north view from my home. My house will not be visible from the north side of Martin Grove Road. It will be hidden behind the extended portion of the house. 
it will impact the sunlight. In summer, the sun rotates from the northern side as a result of extension of the building will block the sunlight to my house. Visitors coming from coming to our house, driving from north to south of Martin Grove Road, after winter turn, winter turn drive, there is an uphill. Due to invisibility of our house, if any visitor's car stops to make a turn to enter our house, due to uphill, the vehicle behind may hit the car and there may be chances of accident. It will restrict the air circulation of my house due to the sheer height of the additional front portion of the building. New additional part of the building will not be aligned to the rest of the houses in the same row, which will look odd. That's what I think. Appearance will be out of character with the existing properties on both sides of the road. The front additional portion of the building will look out of planned structure of the other buildings of the neighborhood. Our beautiful city of Toronto is well planned so it'll be out of order. The front extension will overlook my house and other homes at the same line, causing loss of privacy and uh, noise value from front extended part, especially the upper part, the second floor, uh, will have a big impact on how this neighborhood and homes appear the, uh, this doesn't uh, comply the present zoning bylaws. As a result of the above reasons, the property value of my house will go down. So the property has a lot of land at the side. And if the side extension is possible, it will not be objectionable at all. That's what I can see for now. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for the neighbor next door? Because uh, we had the four letters, we only had the one speaker. Any questions or we'll go back to uh, the agent uh, for his rebuttal to uh, the remarks of the neighbor. Okay, Mr. Assad. Yeah, so the addition is uh, not going on the, the side of the 455 Martin Grove. It's, uh, it's on the opposite side, and uh, we don't have any neighbors. Uh, well, the owners don't have any neighbors on the opposite side uh, because of the, the shape of the lot, and their house is, quite frankly, the last one on this uh, development. And uh, I, I don't see how there are any privacy issues because we're not putting any windows or uh, on, the, on either side of the... Uh, addition to be overlooking into their property. Uh, the only windows are at the front facing Martin Grove. And then there's a, um, at the entrance uh, addition, we have a, a strip window right at the top. It's uh, just to bring in light. It's not for uh, overlooking into uh, other properties. And in terms of light, um, the addition, proposed additions at the Northwest of the existing house. So. I don't see how uh, light could be an, an issue because uh, their property is uh, located well away from where the addition is being proposed. Um, and so if anything, uh, it would be the late, late evening light uh, that could uh, be, uh, you know, a slight, it may have a slight effect or block. Um, and, and the addition uh, in the winter, in winter months, uh, uh, because of the, uh, um, the the proximity or location, would actually block some wind uh, uh, going onto 455. Uh, also, um, a noise issue from the second floor dimension. The second floor part of the addition is a, a, a bedroom, uh, so I don't see how uh, there would be any concerns uh, uh, coming from from you know from the second floor. Um, I think, um, I don't think this, uh, we've, the owners have carefully thought about it and we've, uh, carefully planned this. And in terms of, uh, the neighborhood, we've, um, we've picked, uh, materials that are already, uh, visible in, in the neighborhood and we haven't, uh, 
we haven't gone for a modernist and ultra modernist uh, look anyways we're trying to uh you know um, blend with the neighborhood and all the materials that we've picked uh are in line with what's currently uh you know that uh, defines the character of the neighborhood okay thank, thank you. you okay um committee members any follow-up questions for uh, either the agent or the neighbor, or is someone ready for, to weigh in with a motion? I'm happy Danny, to weigh in. Was ready. Sorry. <laughs> I'm happy to weigh in with a motion um, to uh, to approve the variances as requested. I believe it is a very desirable renovation, and I believe it meets the four tests. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. It's a motion to approve the application. Danny Bellissimo seconds the motion. Okay, and there is a believe there's no condition, there's no verb enforcer on this one, right? So, okay, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sat. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Gosh. Okay, the next two applications we'll be hearing together, 8 and 9, 89 and 91 James Street. They're identical uh, applications to uh, construct new detached dwellings with attached garages, each with three variances. And uh, we have urban forestry requesting uh, conditions 1 and 5 on 89 and just urban forestry 1 on 91. We have um, a number of, we're going to deal with these together even though I see that in some applications you only have one neighbor because they're not only concerned on one side. For example, 93 James is objecting to 91 but not to 89 because they're not adjacent to that one. Uh, so we'll deal with these, I guess, together. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, a number of speakers are not actually here. Okay, perhaps we should go through that. Then. So I can, I can. So um, the agent is, of course, here. Uh, Mr. Andy Choles from the LBNA is here. Stephen Vela is not. Okay. Sandy Donald is available for both. Um, Beverly Carey of 93 James Street is available. Sorry? Uh, if you look Who's at that? item number nine, Beverly Carey for 93 James. Okay. She is on the line. Yes. And then uh, Randy and Ron are not available. Randy Wilkmotters and John Jameson who were commenting on the 91, actually on both of them. That's right, but they are not going to be okay. speaking today. Okay, so just to go through who we have present, we're first going to hear from the agent. Uh, then we have um, Andy Choles. Uh, I don't know if he's on behalf of the Long Branch uh, Neighborhood Association. Sandy Donald, 3436th Street, in lieu, and then Donna Struck, same address, will not be speaking? Will not be, no. Okay, and as well, uh, the carry carries a 93 James. Are present, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's hear from uh, the agent, Craig uh, Ritz. So, uh, Craig Ritz here, um, agent for the owners and CAR Design Studio on that 53 Chauncey Avenue. We actually wish to request a deferral at this time for both number 89 and 91. Uh, planning has requested a deferral uh, to allow them time to review our submitted uh, neighborhood character guideline checklist. Uh, which is a requirement uh, in this neighborhood. Uh, we have made a number of revisions uh, to the proposal through the zoning review process uh, to eliminate or reduce uh, some of the variances. Uh, and we are just awaiting further comments from planning at this time to see uh, what we can address further. So I assume you're going to be resubmitting revised plans. And it's just, you know, this matter was, again, supposed to be heard April 13th. And I actually had it noted at that time that you were going to be it was going to be deferred. I think it was planning was asking for deferral in order to submit the Long Branch uh, guideline checklist at that time. So I assume you did that, but now you're still working on your revised plan, so you'd like to defer. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, we had, uh, submitted the, uh, the the guideline checklist. Uh, planning has still uh, not had an opportunity to uh, to review that. So of course we do want to, to hear the comments and see what we can do additionally to. Uh, you know, to address okay. any uh, of yeah. their issues. Yeah. Okay, so I take it the neighbors will be happy because you'll be coming back with something that hopefully has uh, less variances or smaller variances or whatever. You, um, uh, so I don't want, we don't know if we have to canvas anyone. Let's, let's at least go in with Mr. Choles at the, uh, for the Long Branch Association, let him weigh in. Uh, 
to your uh, request for deferral. Yes, we uh, just yeah. want to make sure we, we uh, my name's Andy Choles. I live at 12 Jasmine Avenue in Long Branch, a uh, member of the board of the LBNA. Just want to make sure that our uh, opposition to this bill is on record. Um, yep. They've, they've revised the FSI, but still at 0.64, that's very large. The length of the house is an issue, and the parking solution, we would request that it remain uh, the parking pad in front. Uh, okay. The you garage know, area Andy, could, could some We don't want to hear from okay, you on the I'm merits sorry. at this point. It's good for them to know what your concerns are and what the neighborhood's concerns are as they go and do their redesign. But we're just asking you in fairness now about the deferral request. So whether you have any issues, I'm, you know, I'm happy to let you snuck in what your concerns are because they can read your letter and the neighbor's letters in any event and hopefully they're going to be planning on making this closer to compliance and not further uh you know further uh invariance okay so you i appreciate me both. thank your, you yeah okay so you're okay with the deferral yes i am okay and perhaps we should just uh check in with the uh we have one adjacent neighbor uh the carries at 93 and just let them uh hear from them on the issue of the deferral quickly. Uh, I don't think we have to hear from everyone. Yes, uh, that's fine. That's Beverly Carey? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Carey. Well, you'll get, re you know, there will be, just to let all the neighbors know, there will be re-notification of the new plans and the new variances once the applicant uh, attends to that. Uh, so at this point, I guess it's at their peril and their, their delay in the meantime until it gets before committee and gets approved in and whatever configuration, uh, there won't be anything built. So, um, committee members, on the matter of the deferral, can we have a motion? Danny Bellissimo moves for deferral. Are we doing just item eight or eight and nine? Well, eight and nine. They're identical. Okay, so I'll move for deferral um, on eight and nine on the understanding that the applicant will consult with the neighbors. Okay, and he's going to do a redesign as well and consult with the Long Branch Association. So, and they'll come back when they're ready. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Seconded for that motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Okay, the matters are deferred uh, to a uh, next available date. Once the applicant is ready, he'll contact staff and let them know, and there will be re-notification to all the, all the neighbors. Great. Thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you, everyone. Okay, the next application is item number 10, 12, Sweet Land Road. Uh, this is for a detached dwelling with an attached garage, five variances, seven letters of support, and urban forestry conditions one, two, and three, and nothing, nothing else. No, um, no neighbors and no um, departments from the city weighing in with comments or conditions. The speaker on this application is the agent Arben Spatty, who we already spoke to this morning. Welcome back. Yes, thank you. I, my name is Arben Spatty. Yes. Okay, Mr. Spetti, I don't believe we need a presentation on this one. Very simple application with uh, five variances and uh, seven letters of support. You're okay with the forestry conditions? Yes. Okay. Committee members, any questions for Mr. Spetti or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Danny Benesimo is ready to weigh in with a motion if there are no questions from the other members. Thank you, Danny. Go ahead. Um, I find that the variance of very minor in nature, the differential is very small, and a, a move for approval is subject to forestry condition. Okay, thank you. Seconded for that motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Shabati. The application thank is you. approved, thank subject you. to the urban forestry conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item number 11, 4 Upland Road. It's the application to construct the covered deck in the rear yard. There is one variance, the coverage. Uh, and um, We have the site-specific zoning bylaw. We have um, an arborist report, an applicant email, a tree permit. That's something, there's some new things since the April uh, hearing. Um, we have an email confirming acceptance of the revised drawings, deleting some columns, uh, doesn't affect or change the variances. And we have opposition from 53 Field Garden uh, regarding the removal of the tree. Uh, and they say they're retaining an arborist um, to assess 
but that would only be on April 15th, which was after the April 13th, but it's well, we're well beyond that now, so perhaps we will hear from the neighbor on that. Um, we don't have a neighbor speaking. We only have the applicant here. So with respect, we'll hear from the agent. There was a large silver maple, and urban forestry in that regard is requesting urban condition number two, but we also see we do now have a tree permit. So perhaps the agent, Stacy Sananovic, will be able to uh, shed some light, and that actually is the uh, owner, not the agent. Is Stacy Sananovic there, please? Yes. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you. Uh, just with regards to the tree, um, I don't. I don't believe that that's an issue at, uh, anymore. I think that when the this variance was going to be heard on April thirteenth, we did not yeah. have at that point the permit, but it has been granted now, given the arborist report and the city, the forestry has removed it, I believe, off of its concern list. So we do have the permit. Um, now it's a matter of deal, uh, you know, working with our neighbors to get their approval to come onto their property. But from a, that, that actually is a separate issue. Yeah, it doesn't actually issue. have, yes. yeah, it doesn't have any impact okay, so on the, what we're So you're saying that for. urban forestry doesn't need their condition anymore because we had it on our checklist that they're looking for condition number two, but perhaps that's, as you say, we have the tree permit, as I said at the outset. Um, so perhaps that isn't an issue, but we still put in the condition, Mr. Carvalino, in any event? Yeah, Mr. Carvalino, the uh, Secretary of Treasury is recommending we would still add that as a condition of approval. Uh, so let's see. I don't think we need a presentation from you, so let's just see if committee members have any questions um, with respect to that. I would, I would say that the, the Urban Forestry Combined Memo does not list the condition for, for oh, this does property. not? Okay, I'm in. Okay. So that has been removed. Okay, my apologies. Okay, so does anyone else have any questions uh, for uh, Ms. Sananovic or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? If no one has any questions, I'm prepared to make a motion for approval of the one variance uh, with no conditions. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Alderson. I'm seconded for that motion. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Slightly ahead, all in favor? And you have unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Item number 12 is for Ashton Manor. It's a, oops, hold on. It's an application for a new detached dwelling. With an attached garage, there are uh, nine, nine variances. Uh, we have an arborist report, applicant submission. We have um, some photos and GFA stats. We have three letters of support. And we have revisions that were made to address the planning concerns. As well, we have uh, three letters of support and urban forestry condition number was one and two. Registered to speak on this is Graham Barrett, the agent, as well as the neighbor at number two, uh, Ashton Manor. Mr. Uh, Barrett. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, just to let you know, Mr. Barrett is present, but the neighbor at two, Ashton Manor, will not be joining us today. Okay. We do have. Good one. morning, committee members. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, I'm the agent for the owner. So for Aston Manor, the name is Graham Barrett, 1575 Dundas Street West. Okay. okay. Um, I'll proceed with the presentation uh, if you like. Um, I did submit uh, some. Yeah, we have your applicant submission here. And we have support letters. I don't believe we need a presentation from you. You're the only one uh, here. Perhaps uh, just let's see if committee members have any questions, unless there's something you'd like to add. <laughs> Uh, unless there's something specific you'd like to advise the committee. Um, no, not especially. This is a concentrated effort to work with planning staff and come up with a design that works for the city and the owners. We're aware of the forestry conditions. Um, this is quite uh, suitable for the area. I mean, I can go through all of this if you like, but I'm sure you'd like to keep things moving. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have anything to add now. Okay, so committee members, any questions for Mr. Barrett? Uh, 
Um, with respect to this, uh, no comment from planning. Uh, they have apparently were planning, they have addressed planning concerns. And there have been revisions made, and if you'd like uh, uh, to see what the changes are, unless you compared it to the last time this application was before us. No questions? And if there's no questions, is someone ready to make a motion on this application? Mr. Chair, I find the requested variances meet the four tests, and I move approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, anyone here prepared to uh, second the motion made by Mr. Taylor? Ms. Alderson, I see your hand up. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval subject to the forestry condition. Thank you very Thank much. You, Mr. Barrett. See you again. Have a good day. Okay, item number 13, 33 Blackbush Drive. It's an application for a two story north side addition, which will include a new attached garage and a second story addition above the existing dwelling. There are two variances. And um, we see transportation has no objection. Um, and urban forestry is, I believe, is requesting condition number five, which is a refusal. We have the materials from the previous hearing. We have um, community planning. There's a condition here. Um, oh, yes, this is, um, we have need to hear from the applicant on this. Um, we do have a request from community planning. We only have the one speaker, the agent, Ab Hishek. Raj, Rajgore, um, planning is looking to ref recommending that we refuse or we actually modify variance number one, the floor space index from 0.52 to 0.548 times the area of the lot. And we have the planning report that explains um, that the applicant has since advised staff they have no objection to modifying the FSI from 0.52 to 0.48. And again, this this memo is back uh, March 31st, so uh, has that been done? Let's just see. Oh, yes, so they've changed it to 0 0.548 times a lot, so the planning comments are uh, not no longer relevant. So, uh, Mr. Rajgore, welcome. And transportation has no objection. So there is really no, nothing outstanding in this. Is Mr. Rajgore, Apishek Rajgore, grab? Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so as you, as you correctly mentioned that uh, the minor variance earlier was uh, the FSI that we had proposed was 0 0.52. But after speaking to the staff, um, it was recommended that, and we accept that uh, we can modify and bring it down to 0 0.48. Um, and later we received a zoning waiver application, um, zoning review waiver application, where we acknowledge that uh, um, in, the, in the revised submission that we will make sure that the FSI is um, uh, 0 0.48 and not 0 0.52. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for the agent or is someone ready to make a motion? And we do have the urban forestry is still on its uh, uh, recommending refusal, so they'll have to deal through city council with that. Is that still on? Could the... anybody small? Yeah. So, so I have a question of the applicant. Yep. Can you, can you address the forestry issue? I'm not understanding it. Can you explain the forestry issue, why they're, they're recommending denial of the application? Can you explain regarding that tree? Yes. Uh, there, uh, there is a city-owned uh, tree on the boulevard, um, and uh, because of the, the possible widening of the driveway, uh, it seems that the tree, like the urban forestry, has uh, has con has concluded that the tree might might be injured. But um, it, from our part, it was a lapse that we didn't show that information on the site plan. Uh, but we don't intend to injure that tree because the driveway will be widened inside the property, and uh, we will we will not. Uh, touch the tree and injure it. Great. So, so just during construction, the tree remains as a city tree. Thank you. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, the most recent memo we received from Urban Forestry states that if the committee wishes to proceed with approval, they would request um, condition number one, which pertains to the city owned tree. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to weigh in? So, yeah, if anyone, if no one has any questions, I'm prepared to make a motion to approve. I find the variances meet the four tests. And I move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number one. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Second for Mr. Taylor's motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Radford. It. Thank you. Okay, the next application is item number 14. It's 9 Aura Lee Boulevard. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, there are four variances. Planning is requesting a condition of approval that it be constructed as illustrated in the site plan and rear elevation plans as it relates to the building depth and to ensure the rear porch remains uncovered. Urban Forestry has conditions one and two, and we have no other uh, communication. We do have an Orbris report been submitted. And the speaker is Marco Vieira. Welcome, Mr. Good Vieira. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, my name is Marco Vieira. I'm at 257 Dunraven Drive, and I'm the designer and the agent for this application. Okay, sir, I don't think we need a uh, fulsome presentation. Just see if committee members have any questions. You're okay with the planning condition I just referred to and urban forestry conditions? Yes, we are. Okay. Committee members, any questions? Questions for Mr. Vieira, or is someone ready for a motion? He's the only speaker. Sophia Reddick, I'm ready for a motion um, to approve this variance request. I find them to be minor in nature and consistent with the four tests, subject to urban forestry and the planning conditions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Reddick. Seconded for that motion. Ms. Alderson, all in favor? Again, unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Vieira. Members, committee, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next application is item number 15, 19 Birchview Boulevard. And uh, this is an application for additions, uh, specifically a two story rear addition, a two story north side. Northeast side addition, a new covered front porch, and a new rear deck. There are five variances. Uh, we have an applicant presentation dated May the 25th, supporting material and arborist report, a TTC memo requesting condition be um, imposed for a TTC technical review due to the proximity to the tunnel infrastructure. Uh, there are letters of opposition. All right, is that? Yeah, I was just checking. There's three letters of opposition. Um, number 17 and number 21. Uh, we have a lawyer's response on, on that as well. And as speakers, we have the agent Franco Romano, as well as um, a lawyer representing the neighbor at 21 Birchview Road right next door, um, which we have their, uh, their letter. Um, as well as the neighbor at, okay, and then we also have the neighbor from 21 Birchview, but they will not be speaking because I guess they are represented by council, so council will be speaking on their behalf. But I guess they're here to observe and listen. Mr. Romano. Good morning, sir, how are you? Good morning, I'm good. I'd like to uh, refer to my presentation slides as I go through your presentation. Terrific, thank you kindly. So this is a, uh, a proposal that involves an existing dwelling. It's an existing dwelling that has a Cape Cod architectural style. And the proposal is for a second story addition over top of the garage. And you'll see that in the upper right, there's a garage on the left-hand side, and that's a second story on the, over top of that existing garage. And then there's a covered porch in the front. There's no new 
no other new construction in the front. So the front yard setback is an existing condition. You see the side yard setbacks are also existing conditions. So the rear addition is a two-story addition. And you'll see that the two-story addition in the rear is a, is a modest 16-foot addition. The overall length is at 12.48 uh, meters or 12.8 meters, which is less than the permitted 17 meters and less than the permitted 19 meters. You'll see that the building addition maintains the existing Cape Cod architectural style, which means that the wall heights are low. The eaves are low. They are 3.39 meters. And you'll see that existing soffit measurement at the upper middle part of, of slide one. So the, the soffit height variance that the zone examiner has identified is for the dormer that is being proposed within the roof line. So that is the only part that breaches the wall height. Otherwise, the walls are less than the seven meters that's permitted under the zoning bylaw. The proposed building additions maintain the Cape Cod style of house, maintain a low profile slope roof with wall heights of 3.39 meters. So the soffit height variance number four is in relation to that dormer that you see in the elevation. To emphasize the low profile built form that's proposed, the building additions maintain the existing first floor ceiling height of eight feet, two inches. The second floor ceiling height of seven feet, 10 and a half inches. Those are much lower than what we see for new construction, including new building additions. So these are, these maintain the low rise, low profile building height. Front yard setback is, is, is existing. That's variance number one. Variance number five is the porch. That's the addition to the, to the front yard. Variance number two, both side yards are existing. Yes, they are being extended for the two-story addition at the rear, but there are compensating differences. The building is, is shorter and not as long and covers less of the property. There is no lock coverage variance than what is permitted as of right. So I would submit that the side yard setbacks that are being proposed do respect and reinforce the existing side yard condition, the existing physical form. The gross floor area that's being proposed as a variance number three, uh, variance number three, this is adding 524 square feet to the dwelling. That's a modest building addition. Maintains a sympathetic building footprint, sympathetic building mass, and once again, Smaller lock coverage than what's permitted, smaller building length than what's permitted, smaller building depth than what's permitted, smaller rear yard, sorry, larger rear yard setback than what's permitted, a lower building height, lower wall, wall heights than, are what are, than what is permitted. So there are no unacceptable adverse impacts that results from this proposal. The gross floor area that's being proposed fits in with what's found on the street. And in terms of the TTC memorandum or, or recommendation, I don't believe it applies in this instance because the subway runs underneath Birch View. And the proposal is for a building addition over top of the existing footprint and a building addition to the rear. Subject to any questions, sir, I submit that the variances satisfy the four tests for a minor variance. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Romano. Any, any questions for Mr. Romano before we hear from the... Uh... Uh, solicitor for the neighbor next door. I, I don't have any uh, questions, but I just wanted to comment for the record. This is not a, a Cape Cod style home. It's a Dutch colonial home with a gambrel roof. Just an FYI. Okay, thank you. Mr. Taylor, I see you had your hand up. Yeah, Mr. Romano, I appreciate your observations on the TTC memo. Um, however, in the report to us, it's clear that they have requested conditions of approval. Would you feel comfortable if we approve this, uh, attaching uh, those conditions to that approval? Yes, sir. I, I have no difficulty in having those conditions attached. I think it'd be pretty, pretty straightforward to satisfy them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. So in that case, let's hear from uh, Andrew Biggert, um, representing 21 Birchview Boulevard. And we have his letter. 
dated uh, April 6th, 2021. Welcome. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of committee. Thank you for uh, taking the time to hear my submissions today on behalf of my clients who live at 21. Um, uh, the adjacent property. And I, I would ask if we could please to just call up the um, applicant's uh, submission that was just before the committee a moment ago. And while we're waiting for that to come up, I'd ask the um, committee to note, uh, you may have already noted it, it, it's rather surprising that the um, presentation that was made to the both by Mr. Romano and as filed, um, doesn't include any pictures of my client's property. Um, and that seems to be in keeping with the approach that's been made here. Um, if we, if my client's property is effectively cut off. And if we look at what's happened, uh, no discussions occurred with my client before this application was made. And if we could just go to the first slide for a moment, please, just at the very beginning where we were. Just to confirm, my client is immediately to the west. It is the one and a half story building on the left side. And you'll note that the side yard setback is 0.53 meters rather than the required 1.2 meters. I acknowledge that's an existing condition, but that's an existing condition with respect to the size of dwelling that currently exists there. And if you look at my client's property, you'll see the cutout on the left side where we've got these, the setback. And my client's got a, an area there where obviously its dwelling does not exist and it's a seating area for my client, an area that they enjoy as part of their backyard. The effect of this development, members of the committee, is to create a massive uh, wall and an oversized house right in the area that affects my client's enjoyment of their property and also um, create privacy issues with respect to my client. So the, I heard Mr. Romano twice speak, uh, use the word modest. What my client is facing is a 31 foot wall that it's gonna be looking at on the east side that's gonna be 0.53 meters away from the property line when it should be 1.2 meters away. So the massing of this building will result in a loss of sunlight shadow impacts, loss of privacy. And in this case, the applicant has made no attempt to slope the roof in any way that would uh, be able to address my client's concerns. And I would ask as well, if we just look at, just to help you, I, I hope, understand the impact of, if you look at the green, the, the drawing on the side right in front of us where it says west side elevation as a right overlay. And what we can see is the, the structure as it currently exists. That's what my client currently enjoys. If we look at what is to, what is proposed, we have this large wall, large dwelling. It's quite massive that my client is facing that's going to be again, half a meter away from the property line. This is an unacceptable adverse impact on my client's property in terms of again, light, privacy, shadow on the area that they enjoy. And there's absolutely no reason why the dwelling cannot be reduced in size. We look at the GFA and the GFA, there's a variance for GFA, which it's supposed to be 0.5 and it's coming in at 0.6. My letter incorrectly states that's a 10% increase. That's actually a 20% increase over the permitted GFA from 0.5 to 0.6. So steps absolutely can be taken to reduce the massing of this structure to address the side yard setback issue, which is also obviously pertinent to my client. No attempts have been made to do that. My client also has concerns with respect to just the prominence of this large structure in terms of its view from the, from the street view. You can see that there's a variance for a covered porch addition. Now, absolutely acknowledge that a lot of the houses along this street um, do not meet these zoning requirements for the front yard setback. There's a continuity, however, with respect to how the structures all align. What's occurring here is at the front of the property, we have a covered front porch that encroaches further into the front yard, thereby increasing the appearance of the massing of this building. So there has been no attempt here to be moderate or moderate uh, what, has, um, what is proposed or to address the concerns of my client. Unfortunately, no discussions took place prior to the filing of any of the plans or, or material. My client did make requests, I can tell you, and the response has been no change whatsoever. 
So my client is left with no option but to appear here today, unfortunately, and oppose this in its totality because this is a exceedingly large structure on a lot that simply cannot accommodate the size of the dwelling that is being placed thereon. And that the person's Would you like to wrap up, sir? You're at five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just wrapping up now, if I may, in a sentence or two. And the persons that are bearing the responsibility for this overburdened uh, development on the property are the adjacent neighbors, both of whom have written in opposition. So I'd ask the, the committee to please uh, turn down the application uh, for the adjustments and um, have the uh, applicant go back to the drawing board and uh, figure out a better development with cooperation with its neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there. I just did, did see. There's another the letter from Seventeen. I think their concern was just they wanted to ensure there were no windows uh, on the east side, as it's 0.63 from the property line on the east side with the new addition. So perhaps Mr. Romano can respond to that, even though they're not here in person to uh, reiterate what they put in their letter as a neighbor on the other side. Okay, uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Bigger before we move on to get a uh, rebuttal from Mr. Romano? And obviously, there will be an opportunity at the end to ask questions of anyone, but at this juncture, if anyone wants to any questions before we go back to Mr. Romano, I guess not. So, Mr. Romano, can you please respond to the concerns uh, raised by the solicitors for the solicitor for the neighbors? Yes, thank you, sir. The uh, the presentation slide actually addresses uh, the item that number 17 had raised. You'll see in the upper right hand side, there's an east elevation that shows that there are no windows on that on that side. Okay. So there are no windows on the east side. Um, and, you know, I applaud Mr. Biggert with his creative uh, letter writing and also presentation today. But there's a there's a number of falsehoods here that are being represented. Number one, when we look at the front addition, we'll see that the front wall of the existing dwelling lines up with the front wall of his client's property. So the front the front yard setback is in alignment along the front of of the of the, uh, of the street along Birchview, etc. When we look at the at the wall that is being uh, proposed in terms of the, uh, the west wall, that west side elevation, you can see in green what is permitted as of right. That is substantially larger than what is being proposed. What is being proposed when it slopes from the front to the back is less of an impact and is indeed quite sympathetic to Mr. Bigert's client. What could be permitted is a, a much larger taller wall the, the the top of that gambrel or that that side that side wall gambrel side is six and a half meters where it's being proposed to extend at that two-story addition the taller height is currently where the building is today so there is no increase impact in shadow light and certainly none on privacy there are no new windows being proposed on that west elevation and none in the building addition on the west side. And might I also uh, convey to you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, that number 21 has full south exposure. And I think it's quite telling that Mr. Biggert had to use my slides in order to make his presentation and my slides do indeed show the neighboring condition at number 21 at the, at the lower uh, left-hand side of, of my slide, as well as a neighboring condition of number 17. And what Mr. Biggert fails to identify today is that number 21 far exceeds building length of number 19 today. So this situation of having buildings that are somewhat different than what, what occurs in neighboring condition is not unusual. And the proposal to have to add 48.7 square meters of GFA, 524 square feet in a sympathetic style that is less in terms of lock coverage, height, length, depth is, is appropriate. And that compensates for the, for the side yard setback variance that is, that is being sought, which is to continue an existing condition that respects and reinforce, reinforces the neighboring and the, um, the surrounding physical 
context. So there is no adverse effect in the loss of light, sunrise, sunlight, privacy, and certainly uh, Mr. Biggert, late on Friday afternoon, finally responded to my request to discuss this project. And to say that, that my client has made no efforts is patently false. It's a falsehood. So subject to any questions, sir, I submit the variances being requested are appropriate and should be approved. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Any questions for Mr. Romano? Or follow-up questions for either Mr. Romano or Mr. Bigger to see shaking your head or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Danny Bellissimo is ready to weigh in with a motion if no one else has any questions. Go ahead, Danny. Um, I find that the design is very sensitive and maintains and respects the character and scale of the existing house uh, compared to what as of right could happen should the whole house be demolished. And I find that uh, the designer has gone to great extent to uh, continue that, uh, that uh, scale interior, interior as well. So I find that the variances are very minor in nature and move approval conditional on TTC condition and forestry's condition. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Yeah, I don't think planning didn't have any. Uh, seconded for that motion. Mr. Taylor. We'll second, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Romano. Thank you, Mr. Burger. Thank you. Okay, our next application, just point out to members, we have 1, 2, 16, 17, 18, and 19 to go before the lunch break. It's now 12 o'clock. We normally uh, recess, but we're going to continue through, finish off the morning agenda, as is our normal practice. Next application, then, is number 16, 10 Canterbury Road. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are five variances. Uh, we have revised plans. Uh, we'll right we have revised plans, a revised wed later. We have a letter, rescinded letters of opposition. We have materials from the previously postponed hearings. And uh, we have planning, requesting a condition of approval that the site be built constructed as illustrated in the site plan, uh, February 16th, as to building length and depth. There are two letters of, uh, ref of opposition. But we, those, it looks like those have been rescinded. So um, registered to speak is Anthony Gornick, the agent, as well as um, the neighbor, someone at 11 Rygate and someone at uh, 38 Ormond Street North. So Mr. Gornick. Hi, Anthony Gornick here. So we have five variances before us today. Yes. If I may, of, of the five, I believe that variance number one and number five are somewhat interconnected and variances number three and number four are interconnected. So if I can group them together, so I'll be addressing three in total. Uh, we have a front yard setback variance. Uh, we are proposing a setback of eight meters where 8.55 meters is required. We also have a architectural feature across the uh, front entry that requires a variance of 1.4 meters. Uh, we feel this to be appropriate as a neighboring home at number eight Canterbury currently has an existing front yard setback of 7.79 meters, which is uh, less than our sought eight meters. We have a variance for dwelling depth and dwelling length. Um, the required uh, length is 16.5 meters and the dwelling depth requirement is 17 meters. We propose to have the length at 28.65 meters and the depth at 28.4 zero meters. Uh, it's very important to note that the majority of this variance is below grade and will not be visible. The homeowners uh, are seeking to create an underground exercise facility and we're going to have the majority of this landscaped over top. So very important that the majority of this variance is not seen from any sort of vista, whether you're at the back or at the side of the property. And the last variance that I wish to address is for um, aggregate side yard setbacks. 
the required aggregate side yard setbacks is uh, 3.36 meters, and we propose the aggregate side yard setbacks to be 2.84 meters, a uh, relief of 0.5 meters collectively. Uh, the current setbacks, aggregate setbacks for this home that are actually at 10 Canterbury is 2.46 meters, so we have increased the side yard setbacks in our proposal over the existing condition. Uh, that's my submission. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gornick. Any questions for Mr. Gornick before we go on to the other speakers? No? Okay, uh, next speaker is Ellen Patterson of 11 Rygate Road. Good morning, or is it good afternoon? Yeah. Okay. In any case, uh, I'll, I'll be brief. Okay. Um, Variances three and four um, do not appear minor uh, variances to me. The percentages are, uh, you know, 67.6% um, and 72.1% in excess of what the code is. And I acknowledge Mr. Gornick's point that this is mostly underground but that is really the nature of my concern in that the, the excavation for this total project is going to be rather substantial. And uh, there are two mature trees at the back of 10 Canterbury Road. And with the uh, substantive nature of the excavation that's required, my concern is that the root system of these trees could be compromised and may not be visible uh, in the immediate future, but one, two, three years down the road, um, those trees might have to be removed. The other uh, issue that I want to go on record with the committee is that we have underground streams in this area. And in uh, July of 2013, we all know there was a substantial storm uh, in Toronto, and I had five inches of water in my basement. So I am very sensitive uh, to what the drainage uh, impact of this project will be with this large underground um, heated storage area, exercise room, whatever it's called. Uh, where is that water going to go now with the the streams that we have, we had water issues before, and I'm concerned that we're gonna have water issues again. I hope we don't, but I wanna go on record as saying um, it's a real possibility with the size of this excavation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and I see that you originally you were joined in your concern by your two neighbors on either side at nine and 13, and they have now rescinded uh, their concern and but you obviously still have your concern yeah I, i've talked that's to them we're we're still spe on speaking terms. that's very good very um, important if the, yeah. the, the water is going to drain the other way yeah and my concern is we don't know how much water is going to be and start with until we start to dig right okay you're entitled to your opinion in any event so uh we have another speaker diane harper at 38 ormond street north I see you're directly behind. I don't know where this uh, Ormond Street is. Well, I'm at. No, uh, no. Well, that's my, my home address. I'm speaking on behalf of my mother who oh, lives at 15 Rygate Road. She's 91. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so the thing is that, you know, my family moved into that area the year I was born, 1965, into that house. And when my mother leaves, my daughter and her husband will be taking that over. So we intend to be there as a family for a very long time. So we are concerned. Um, because I've lived there my, my whole life, I've seen the changes in the neighborhood. So um, when, you know, they say that there's there's you know uh, no difference in the in the the massing or the character. There there absolutely is, and there absolutely will be because first of all, it's a teardown. It's not a renovation. It's a teardown, and a re and a rebuild. And no matter 
how you do that, no matter what materials you use, it will always look new. And there's always this danger point right around this kind of time where people go, we don't need those kinds of houses anymore. We want these new kinds of houses, and that's how we lose our stuff to history. The reason everyone who visits my mother at this place says, I love your neighborhood, is because of the ones that have stayed the same. And then they look at the the new ones, the new builds, the ones that are so much higher, and they say, what happened there or what happened there? You know, uh, my mother has the same interior ceiling height, and yet her height is way smaller, even though she has 10-foot ceilings. But I, I know that, you know, pleas to, you know, history and character are not really going to do it with this committee. So I have the same concerns as the, the previous speaker. That massive underground one, I'm afraid of it interfering with the trees, and the canopy is part of the character of our neighborhood. Um, the age of the trees is part of the character of our neighborhood. Replanting with new tiny little new street trees is not the same. And um, every time our neighbors have, have done a renovation in that area, my mom's property gets flooded, right? <laughs> because we are still at the same elevation as when it was built in 1948. So the backyard gets to be a giant soaking sponge because all those impermeable surfaces that people put in, all those massive pools that people put in, all the, you know, underground spaces and everything else, all that water comes and lives at our place. Um, so it is concerning to me that we're going to lose part of our canopy, which I'm absolutely sure is going to happen. I, I was... My mother was in the hospital when this first came down, and I took a poke around to see exactly where it was. I know the impact of all these kinds of things. Where I live now, when we moved here, it was – we could not have more privacy if you had, you know, paid for it. All the trees and everything else were all around us, and as things have been taken out – Pavement's been put right up to fence lines. Um, you know, decks have been built overhanging the back. We've lost every ounce of privacy we ever had. And I'm worried about that neighborhood, particularly since my daughter and her husband are going to be living there for the rest of their lives. And Canterbury is a tiny little crescent, and it is just not visually big enough to support that kind of massive house. There's already one on that street and if it's if you start tearing down more, it's gonna be a nightmare and it's gonna lose all its charm. Okay, thank you. Hello? Yep, thank you for that. Um committee members, anyone have any questions for Mrs. Ms. Harper? Uh fifteen right right gate. She's one house over from the other speaker, Mr. Patterson, at the rear. Uh, or let's go back to Mr. Gornick for his uh, rebuttal. And we do have a report. Oh, can I can I add one tiny little thing? Go can ahead. I add one thing? Please. That I, I just have a technical question, sorry. Er, because I've been listening to everybody, I was concerned that somebody earlier in, in today's process mentioned that if they're granted a variance, um, for a certain thing that they can then sort of build upon that. If if they get that variance for the huge underground footprint, does that mean at a later date either themselves or another owner will be able to build on top of that whether without getting separate Not approval? Not without coming back to the committee. Not without, Not without coming, coming back, back to the, back the committee. committee? They cannot build on top of what, you know, we heard the underground... We, they would have, that's they're they're getting asking for these variances and that's all that's before us. So anything else that they wanted to do that would trigger a variance. If it could be built as of right, they don't have to come back. 
but that would obviously they're already over, so they would have to come back. Okay, so the, okay, the, so let's, like let's, if they get approved for this footprint, it's not going to mean that they can just, you know, no. in 20 years, somebody else can just build one right on top of it and say, well, we have the variance. No, we have they the have footprint. to come back because they'd have a higher floor space index than the 0.73 that they're, oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong application. But if it, if it increases, there's additional variances. I was just moving on to the next one to prepare to present that one. So the variances yeah, are what okay. the variances are, and, and they'd have to come back. So I know okay, someone thank mentioned you that much. earlier this morning, but that's not the case. I appreciate okay. that clarification. Okay, thank you. Any So, uh, Mr. Gornick, can you please respond to the the two neighbors? Originally, had all five neighbors in the back um, concerned, but the, through two of them have dropped out, but we still have 11 and 15. So if you can please respond to their concerns. Yes, so for the, the dwelling depth and the length, again, you know, the majority of that is underground and will be landscaped over top. So, you know, it will not be visible from any vista. Uh, we are not seeking a rear yard setback variance. So the, the back wall of the proposed home is far enough away from any rear yard setback that, you know, we don't require any variances as such. Um, I do appreciate, uh, you know, we had this large storm uh, many years ago, but we are not making any topographical changes in the rear and the drainage patterns that are existing now are going to be sort of maintained. So we don't see how our proposal will negatively impact any neighboring homes. And we are policed by the building department fairly, you know, stringently on, on making sure that we do not change drainage patterns and have any adverse effect on neighboring homes. Uh, to address the, uh, the, the previous uh, submission, we are not seeking uh, any height variances or wall height variances, uh, nothing that's related to massing. So I know that, uh, you know, massing was mentioned, but we have no variances related to massing. And we feel that the, our submission today is appropriate and we would appreciate positive consideration. Thank you. Okay. Uh, committee members, any uh, last minute questions or follow up questions for the applicant or the neighbors uh, or is someone ready for a motion? And that's right. All we, we, uh, have, we don't have massing. We have height and depth, front yard setback, side yard aggregate. Danny Bellissimo is ready to make a motion if no other questions are coming forth from the members. Go ahead, Danny. Um, I find that this uh, proposal uh, is basically minor in nature because of some small setback issues and length and depth, although they're larger, are un they're not visible as the applicant has indicated. And that the uh, building, although maybe a large building, is not a massing issue, it's not a massing problem based on variances. So I'm satisfied to move approval uh, of the uh, variances subject to two conditions, one from planning and one from forestry. Yes. Okay, thank you. Seconded for Mr. Melissimo's motion. Mr. Taylor. I'll second, I'll second Mr. Chair. Thank you. All in favor? We have unanimous approval. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Gornick. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you. Your next application is item number 17, 31 Wendover Boulevard. It's an application to construct a two-story rear and south side additions, a new front porch, and a new covered rear deck. There are seven variances. We have the highlighted revision page showing a reduction in the uh, second variance, which is the floor space index from 1.05 to 0.73. Um, we have uh, seven variances. We have an arborist report, a cover letter dated March 23rd. We have two opposition from 25 and 22 Wendover. Um, and we have a planning condition of approval. That the elevation drawings uh, be built, constructed as illustrated as relates to the calculation of lot coverage. And speakers, we have Michael Flynn as agent. And we have the neighbors at 22, 24, and 25 Wendover, uh, as well as, I believe, some opposition letters, uh, three opposition letters. Mr. Flynn, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, members. <clears throat> I'd like to start out by saying that this is an, exist is an existing house which is somewhat more sunk into the ground than you would do on a normal modern home. 
And as a consequence, the uh, what we would look at and say is the first floor has been designated as a second floor by the building department building department as by their examiner so uh, next we have item number seven has been deleted the rear platform so, uh, variance for 13.4 was four, mm -hmm. four meter is permitted that's correct okay. so there is no variance for platform okay uh, however that area I'll explain this in detail. The original uh, plans for this development included a rear covered deck. Through discussions with planning and neighbors, et cetera, it was decided that the so-called covering was not a need or a requirement, and it was removed altogether. Uh, then it became a question of, uh, <laughs> is it a second floor platform or not? It's 1.09 meters above grade, but it sits on top of a, of an engineered uh, basement, so it's therefore called an engineered patio, and it is it's actually nothing more than a patio, three feet off the ground, so to speak. So there is no intrusion into neighboring properties by, uh, you know, someone sitting on a deck, a second-story deck. It's in fact a ground floor deck or patio, and has no negative impact on surrounding properties. So, as you stated, Mr. Chairman, the uh, let me just get this right. Lot coverage has reduced to 46.54, and that includes the patio because it sits on top of an engineered basement. The uh, gross floor area has been reduced to 0.73 or 229.5 square meters. The front yard setback is marginal and therefore I believe has no impact. The side yard setback is an existing condition. Uh, so in in both cases, there are existing conditions. And the eave setback is an existing condition. And as I said, number seven has been deleted altogether. So substantial uh, changes were made to this. And a lot of it goes to designation of what is a first floor, what is a second floor, et cetera, et cetera. And that can be very confusing for neighbors to understand. And as a consequence, you'll see that we have objections from people who think there was going to be this large second floor uh, balcony, that who think that there was going to be this massive uh, FSI situation and, and lot coverage situation. Whereas if this was not an engineered deck, it would not be counted in coverage because it's effectively on the ground. It's within the allowable height of any patio. So the variances are not severe in that they don't have an impact on surrounding properties. The lot coverage is actually much less than what is technically counted. The gross floor area is actually much less than what is actually counted. Oh, by the way, when the basement is counted as a first floor, it's also counted in the GFA. So the basement area is included in the GFA. So that's, the reality is it's not that anywhere near as big as, they, as the number says it is. And all the other conditions exist. So I would suggest to you that these uh, variances are minor and very technical in nature, and they meet the poor test. And I ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Yep. Any questions for Mr. Flynn before we move on to the other speakers? Okay, the first uh, speaker 
And these are located, it looks like uh, two of them are 22 and 24, which is across the street. I don't know if it's how it matches up. And, then, and there's one on the uh, odd side of the street, uh, 25, which is, I guess, a couple of properties over. So let's start off with Joseph Sunday from 22 Wendover Road. Mr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt. Mr. Sunday at 22 Wendover will not be joining us today, but Mr. Sexton and Mr. Tremaine are available. Okay, so sorry, next Mr. is Don Sexton. Mr. 24. Chairman, we can't hear him. Okay, let's see if you can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. The moderator was, let's just see if you can hear the, uh, the neighbor who comes on. Mr. Sexton? Do you hear me? Yes. Mr. Flynn, do you yes. hear Mr. Sexton? Okay. Does everyone hear me? Yes. Mr. Sexton? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, to proceed, I take a sex exception to Mr. Flynn's description. Um, if, point in fact, his interpretation is correct, then the city planning's documents are in error. Um, that has to be resolved first. What's the first and second floor? I've been in that house. I lived in that house. There is, there is no the nonsense in first and second floor. There is a first, a first floor, which is three steps up, four steps up from the street. And the, uh, then there's the upstairs portion. This house under construction is putting another floor on top of the existing second floor where they're going to be putting the, uh, the air conditioning and furnaces for the house, as well as more living space. The addition, what Mr. Flynn is calling the second floor, is a third story addition on the house. These issues have to be resolved. Mr. Flynn's presentation sounded very good, except it's not based on what the city measured. It's not based on what the city knows to be true. Mr. Flynn extended making the second floor into the first floor, into the second floor, third floor. He's got, he wants to confuse you all. The city knows the facts. The city regarded the facts. They listed this as a significant bylaw measurement. In terms of floor space, the, um, the floor space that's been required is more than 50% larger than what's, than what's, um, what's permitted. Um, the, uh, and that has to be addressed. The amount of floor space that Mr. Flynn says is trivial is very, very significant. This is a huge house extending back, which will create a significant shadow effect on the houses both to the north and the south from that house. Um, I've lived in that house. I own that house. I know what the house is. It's the first floor. You walk up, there's living room, dining room, kitchen. That's the first floor. Mr. Flynn say, try and say that's the basement. Then you go upstairs, that's the second floor. You go up further and what this chap is proposing to be the third floor, that's the, the attic, third floor. He's putting up the air conditioning and the furnace up in the third floor and extending the third floor for the entire length of the house, making it a very, very huge house. The city identified that in its, in its bylaw, uh, bylaw variance presentation. We have to go with what the city has measured, what the city has decided is the truth, the facts, not what someone else, such as Mr. Flynn, who's paid to say things, extend just basically lies to this, to this group, to, uh, to you in this meeting. So I leave this by saying this is an atrocious size of house for the size of lot. It over it creates a house much larger than any other house that, that has abided by the bylaws. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sexton. Any questions for Mr. Sexton before we uh, move on to the next speaker uh, at 25? We do have letters from both of these uh, speakers in our package. Okay, uh, let's move on then to Mr. Tremaine, Mr. and Mrs. Tremaine, and who's speaking. It's, it's Rick Tremaine speaking. <clears throat> Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. Good I'm morning. going to be very brief. Yep. Um, I, we have no objection to five of the seven variant requests. Uh, our ba major concern was number three, which is the um, required front yard setback. And number seven was the um, platform area. Yeah, he's now advised uh, that he's deleted, sir, that variance number seven. Exactly. So that 
limits my objection now okay. to the number three, which is the required front uh, setback. Yes. Okay. Um, I think it's important on our little street that we maintain the continuity of the street and this request to move the houses forward um, has come before the committee before and every time it's been refused. Um, and I just think that's that's my major objection here is that mm -hmm. keep the front setback um, as it is now. And that's that's our only objection. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I would just like the point I think that was Mr. Sexton mentioned that planning, you know, planning identifies the variances and those are the variances. As stated, Mr. Flynn was just mentioning mitigation that in fact, uh, which Mr. Sexton didn't agree with, but just to let it let you know that, that are those are the variances uh, as presented. Um, but planning, in fact, has asked for a condition of approval in the event that committee sees fit to approve the application. They have not said that they're not in favor. They've just asked that the elevation drawings uh, be tied to the calculation of the lot coverage. So they have not recommended refusal of this application or any of the variances. Um, so Mr. Flynn, uh, can you please respond to the concerns of the two neighbors? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd first like to draw your attention to just, uh, it's an elevation here, just a moment. Um, if I can find it. Okay, elevation A3.1. We're drawing A3.1, which is the front elevation. Shows you where the first floor, the finished first floor is. So the gentleman who spoke, he talked about three steps up. It might be four, but let's not split hairs. Then there is a what we would consider a first floor and a second floor and an attic. The drawings show that there will be a mechanical room in the attic, that it will not be habitable. There is no additional floor being added to the existing house, but there is a rear two-story addition being proposed and a front porch. That's the proposal. So I don't think I'm inventing anything when I say that it's a two-story house with a proposed two-story rear addition. I'm not creating a third floor unless you want to count the mechanical room in the attic as a third floor. But as I explained and have explained many times, when the basement is not your typical basement and the ceiling of the basement or the ground floor is, you know, 1.2 meters above grade, then the first floor is considered a first floor. Otherwise, it's considered a second floor, and the basement is considered a first floor. So if the basement is not considered a floor, it's not counted in GFA. But if it is considered a first floor, then the GFA of the basement is included in the GFA. So this is not a particularly large house. Certainly, there's a two-story addition being asked for on the rear of the house. But pretty much everything else exists. And the GFA, I wouldn't say it's misrepresented, but it doesn't truly tell you the picture. Neither does the FSI because of the engineered basement and the patio in the rear. And as I said, we made substantial changes and got rid of the covered deck in the rear to satisfy planning and to reduce the variances. So as you have seen, we have, I think, an appropriate development, which is in keeping with the neighborhood, keep within keeping of other approvals in the neighborhood, and appropriate. And I don't think it has a negative impact on anyone surrounding it. And that's my presentation, sir. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. <clears throat> Any questions from Thank Mr. You. Flynn or the other neighbors, or is some ready to weigh in with the motion? Danny Bellissimo is the interest of way of the motion. Okay, go ahead, Danny. Uh, I find that the variances one to six are minor in nature. Seven has now been deleted. Um, I find the explanation for these large numbers to be clear and that uh, 
there is a technical issue regarding the basement. So the major problem is not really as presented by the opponents. Uh, and uh, the height is not an issue because it's not based on one of the variances. So I'm okay with the height. Um, and so uh, I would uh, therefore move approval for items one to six on the conditions set by planning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. So the constructed is illustrated when I mentioned earlier. Seconded for that motion. Ms. Alderson, all in favor? Okay, the matter is unanimously approved. Thank you, Mr. Flynn, and thank you, neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next application is item number 1829 North Park Drive. It's an application to construct a two-story front addition, a second-story addition over the existing garage, and a one-story front addition. There are four variances. Um, we have a cover letter confirming the uh, alteration of the size of the proposed second floor terrace, um, one to 10 meters. And we have support from Joe uh, and Rosemary Rodriguez. We have uh, 23 North Park pointing out an incorrect de denotation on the site plan being the description of the two adjacent properties and a letter of concerns um, as well. Okay, and there's no conditions from uh, planning or from forestry. So speakers on this application are Enzo Lacusano, as well as the neighbors at 23 North Park and 12 Rollett. And I believe the neighbor 12 Rollett was one of the ones in support, so. Mr. Chairman, just to uh, update, um, only the agent will be speaking today. The neighbors are not here. Okay. Maybe you can tell me that in the future if you know that before I say they're going to be speaking. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so we only have Enzo Lacasano speaking. Ms. Lacasano? Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay, so it's only you. The two neighbors will not be speaking. They were registered on our uh, pre-registration list. So yes, that's correct. Okay, community. Um, that's Mr. Lacasano, correct? Yes, it is. So welcome, community members. Do you uh, wish a presentation on this application? Shaking your heads, no. Okay, Mr. Lacasano, is there anything you'd like to uh, mention before I see, or unless we see if committee members have any questions? Oh, I just wanted to uh, um, to respond to the. I guess there was a concern about a. There was a typo on the site plan. Yes. Um, for I believe. Sorry, I just want to get the address uh, correct. Twenty three. Uh, I believe it was twenty three. The surveyor, uh, since our site plan is based on our survey on the survey drawing. Uh, we didn't catch that 23 was labeled by the surveyor as a two-story. It's actually a one-story. I just want to put that on record. Yeah, the one on the east side and 23. Correct. As well as what about the southwest side at 16 Rollett? That's also a single-story uh, bungalow. They pointed that out as well. Yeah, that is that is correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but in terms of the substantive uh, issues, the four variances, let's just see if committee members have any questions or if someone's ready for a motion. Uh, oh, sorry, I just wanted to point out, uh, Mr. Chair, that um, the the waiver came in due to a uh, planning request to reduce the, uh, the platform above the second story um, so that uh, we already, we had an original uh, zoning review done, um, but because uh, planning came in with a late comment, uh, we decided uh, to go in with a waiver uh, in order to reduce the platform to meet planning's requests. And that's at the 10 square meters in variance three? That's correct. Okay, so it was originally larger, you reduced it to planning's request? Correct. Okay, um, thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Or let's just see if committee members have any questions or if someone's ready to make a motion. No, that's uh, that's all we have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lucasano. Any questions for Mr. Lucasano, or is someone ready to weigh in? Mr. 
Mr. Chair, I believe the four variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval with no conditions. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Taylor for approval with no conditions, seconded by Ms. Alderson. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Lucasano. Thank you so much to you and the committee. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, our last item of the morning agenda, item 1965, Lake Crescent. Uh, this is an application for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are five variances. We have um, revisions to the plans, uh, incorporating the planning reports recommendations, as you just, this matter was deferred or was supposed to be heard in October, in April, and they had the time to do so. Um, we have a, um, a planning report. We have three letters of op op opposition. And um, the planning report is to refuse variance five. Is it five? Hold on a second. We also have forestry conditions as recommending a refusal. And uh, the planning report, just to clarify, is to ref refuse the front yard variance and to variance number six, the main wall height, to modify from 8.83 meters to 8 meters. Uh, it says at the bottom of the planning report that the applicant has agreed to revise the design of the roof line from a mansard roof to projecting bay windows to a hip roof line without projecting bay. These changes will ensure the proposal is more consistent with the pattern of development. So we'll hear from the applicant whether he, that's, since that memo was back uh, some time ago before the aborted hearing, dated April 6, the memo, so whether that's been attended to. So the speaker on this application, the applicant is Chris Marchese. And we have Simon Bussemart at 63, um, who I believe also wrote a letter uh, in attendance. So, Mr. Marchese. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and fellow committee members. My name is Chris Marchese, a planner at Design Plan Services. Um, just want to clarify the staff report. Um, that was prior to us having an opportunity to make the revisions. Yeah. But if you look at the new um, public notice that was sent out, there is no variance being requested for front yard setback, and the proposed exterior main wall height has been reduced from 8.83 to 8 meters. So the revised plans are reflecting the planning comments that were put forward prior to the original hearing before being cancelled. Right. Um, I'm aware of the urban forestry recommendations, and although I do respect your opinion, there is currently no tree situated on the subject property, and the proposed dwelling front main wall is in line with the existing front main wall. Um, I am of the opinion that a conclusion will be conducted if approved today that can um, satisfy both parties in regards to forestry concerns. And I'll be happy to have a standard urban forestry condition associated with the approval if the yeah. committee feels that the application meets the four tests. Sure. Okay. Any questions? Um, regarding the, do we need a presentation? I can go through the various. Uh, well, quickly. why don't we just so, um, hear from the neighbor? I see we have uh, one neighbor at 63. We have two letters from 63 and from 67. Uh, then committees have, committee members have read those letters, and we do have the neighbor at 63 appearing to, I guess, uh, confirm his objections. So, um, committee members, would you like to just hear from the neighbor and have Mr. Marchese respond? And, uh, you understand the application rather without a uh, presentation. I see you did reduce that variance originally. There were, I believe, six variances before us, and now there is five. Yes, that was to eliminate the front yard height. setback variance. Yeah, and also the height variance, I guess, is now eight meters as they request. Exterior main wall height, yep. not overall building height, but yes, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay, so let's hear from Mr. Busamart at uh, 63, uh, we've, who we've also heard from in writing, and you'll have a chance to respond. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for extending this uh, morning session to the afternoon so that all of us can put on our case. Uh, I'll try to uh, keep it brief. I understand uh, that uh, you've all read my letters and I've heard comments actually on a different case. Yeah, can you try to slow down, sir? Chat. Sir, can you just speak a little slower? Yeah, so sorry. Um, sorry, can you actually hear me better now? Yes. Okay. So yeah, again, I, I'll keep it brief. I've sent uh, all my comments in in writing, and I, I understand you guys have uh, already read it. Um, also, uh, there's two issues that I won't emphasize on today. 
The, the first one would be water flow management or water drainage. Uh, it's already a big issue in the area. We are close to the lake, and whenever there's a heavy episode of rain, um, you know, uh, our yard gets flooded, my basement gets flooded. Uh, I live in a hole where it's a renovated bungalow, uh, but the foundation is made of brick, it's very porous, so any episode of water is uh, deeply impacting humidity inside our home. Uh, with the current proposal of reduced uh, site setbacks, as well as very reduced uh, eaves, uh, this is going to largely impact my home by directing water flow even more to uh, what's, uh, what's currently happening. Uh, the overall footprint of the house as well on the lodge is likely to impact that as well. So this is my main concern, my number one concern, I would say. Uh, second concern is in the access to natural light. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone can put up on the screen uh, the few photos that I've uh, attached to my letters. Uh, it, it, it drastically it shows drastic impact of the house not only on my access to light if we look at yeah uh, attachment two and three but also on surrounding properties uh if you look at the one that's on the screen right now we can see the red square would kind of like represents the size that's currently proposed and you can clearly tell it's not in keeping with any of the neighborhood properties uh that also means that many of us are going to be facing a big uh, a big wall going forward. This is also a uh, showcase on the light that's uh, after this one, attachment three. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, this is deeply impacting uh, our access to the light and to natural light. You can tell in the kitchen there won't be much light anymore. Our deck is going to be facing a wall. And uh, if we can go up to the attachment number one, you will see that I do have a couple of. Um, um, sky windows that are going to be completely obstructed by the current proposal. The combination of the height and the uh, east side setback, uh, you know, kind of makes me extremely concerned that so my upper floor is going to be extremely dark going forward. Uh, my view is that this is not a minor variance. Uh, you know, it should take into consideration neighborhoods. We've never had a chance to speak to. Uh, to, the, the, uh, to the developer, I would mention that we do have uh, uh, the current development that's going on down the street. So it pretty much tells down the street that never even bothered you not know, come by and try to discuss. We don't even care about their own garbage because my wife and I had to actually clean up the garbage of their tenants. So we do have tenants uh, currently in the house where they moved out recently. Uh, nobody cared about that. So, you know, obviously it's not something that I would expect neighbors to, uh, to take care of. Uh, and the last thing I will mention is that the current proposal, as far as I understand, uh, is also going to extend on the other side, so on the uh, on the west side, and, and the neighbors was a senior person. Uh, I understand she has sent in a letter. She's very concerned that the current proposal is actually building on the easement that she shares, and that if the proposal is, uh, is approved as is, she would not have access to our parking spots in the back, and the, given the, the narrow size of the driveway. That's pretty much all for me. Thank you very much for uh, hearing me. And again, my view is that this is a, a not minor uh, request. Thank you, sir. Any questions for uh, the speaker? And if not, we'll go back to Mr. Marchese for his rebuttal. Mr. Marchese? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a, few, a few comments raised by the abutting neighbor, so I'll try to hit them all, but I apologize if I miss any, and if you need any clarification, I'll be happy to offer that. Um, first and foremost, talking about water drainage, I know it's not in the jurisdiction of the committee, but the existing side yard setback is at 0 0.5 meters, and the eaves are basically at zero. So the existing condition is being improved on the subject property. Um, in terms of the drawings that were represented by the neighbor, um, I'm not sure they were done by a professional or done to scale, so I don't think it really depicts the image that was uh, that's that's being proposed here. If you look at the site plan, if I can have staff pull that up to show the committee members, um, that would be great. So when looking at this, um, it'll be clear that you can see there's a front pop-out for the windows at 0 0.6, and they're going to have to zoom in more to that little jot out there. Um, 
Exactly. So that's what's creating the length variance. If that was that's just an architectural feature to provide a, an enhanced streetscape along Lake Crescent. If that front main wall was just uh, locating a straight line without the wall location in terms of length um, is is permitted if that front wall were to be brought in and that front um, architectural feature is not creating a front yard setback and there is no rear yard setback on the proposal. In terms of the height, we're talking about exterior side main wall heights. We have first floor ceiling heights of 11 uh, feet, but second story ceiling heights of nine feet. So an average of 10 feet, which is very standard. Um, if the dwelling were to be proposed with a sloped roof with compliant walls, um, the sloped roof can go up to a larger number than what's being proposed, which would have a further impact on the massing that is being proposed through this application. Um, in regards to the easement, I've confirmed with the architect and the property owner that there will be no impeding of this easement, which is not permitted legally anyways. Um, but I've confirmed that to the satisfaction um, to make sure that the neighbors are aware of that. Um, just another thing, um, the footprint, there's no lock covers being proposed in this proposal. So um, based on that and the provided justification, I'm of the opinion that the uh, associated variances with this proposal meets the four tests under section 45.1 of the Planning Act and therefore should be approved. And I'll be happy to answer any further questions at this time. Thank okay. you. Mr. Marquez, Thank just you. to clarify your position. So you have already very, you've made changes to variance six. It is now at eight, 0 0.00 meters as opposed to 8.83 and that's it, what it you're requesting variance five now because the front yard setback was removed oh so right yes, okay I okay yeah, yeah okay so that's variance five but there is no longer a front yard setback variance two is eliminated and variance six which is now variance five is 8.00 so you have complied. You are going. Public notice, Mr. Chair. No variances are being eliminated. The public notice in front of you for this hearing reflects the most recent proposal and the changes that were requested by planning staff. Okay. So when I look at the front yard setback at five point nine eight, whereas five point three five is what you're seeking, you're still seeking that. Incorrect. I think you're looking at the previous public notice. Um, a oh, revised okay. public notice was sent out on May 14th. Okay. And oh, there's sorry. no front yard setback yeah, variance yeah. associated on that public notice. Right. You know what I was doing? I was looking at the public notice and the staff report because they replicate it. That's the, that yes. the issue. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Correct. Correct. So that is what's before us. The, the five variants, including variance five at the wall height of eight meters. I, I apologize. I was looking at the the one that was replicated in the zoning, uh, the planning memo. Okay, so I apologize. Any questions for Mr. Marchese or someone ready for a motion? I, I have a quick question, uh, if I may. Um, the house directly across the street at 66, do you have any idea how that compares in terms of uh, height? Um, let me just pull up my. It's a, it's a new it's a new build, and I'm just wondering how you know whether it's higher or lower. But it looks like it might be lower. Off the top of my head, I'm going to pull this up. But I was the authorized agent on 100 Lake Crescent that was approved for exterior main wall height of 8.33 meters. But I'm just going to check my research for you quickly to see if we have the um, decision at 66 Lake Crescent. Um, unfortunately, I guess because it was more recent, it was not within the research request that was put forward. Um, yeah, it's a, so it's a new build. I apologize for that, but just to provide some context, um, 93 Lake Crescent was at 8.6, 81 Lake Crescent was at 8.28, 100 Lake Crescent was at 8.33. So it's in keeping with um, the averages and the recent redevelopment in this area, and especially along Lake Crescent. In any event, you've reduced it as requested by community planning to eight meters from 8.83. So Correct. I'll see if, why, if anyone has a problem with that because you complied with planning in any case. Any other questions? I see Ms. Alderson's on the phone, so I guess she's happy with the answer. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, uh, just a question. Um, we talked about urban forestry and their request for denial. Uh, they've updated their comment on May 18th to say that should the committee choose to approve this application, they would require a cash in lieu of 
tree payment of $583. Would you be agreeable to uh, such a condition being imposed? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, uh, we have no issue with the standard urban forestry condition being sought um, by the urban forestry department if this application were approved by the committee here today. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have any further questions or is someone ready for a motion? I'm ready to uh, make a motion, Mr. Chair. I find the requested variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act. And I move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number three. Okay, seconder for that motion. Mr. Bellissimo. Any Bellissimo. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you very much. You have your uh, application has been approved, Mr. Marchese. Thank you, Mr. Busmart, for your participation you. as well. Okay, and we stand adjourned now, and we will resume the 1 p.m. agenda at 2 p.m. Okay, we're going to start an hour late, and we'll advised. So everyone have a good lunch. We'll see you back here at 2 o'clock. For uh, just an announcement for all participants who are online right now for the one o'clock session, because we